Shoe hair, get off of me. I'm shedding, Steven. Dude, your table is just covered in hair. Fuzz. Hair, hair fuzz. <laughs> all that stuff. But what's insane is I got up there to the GoPro angle today to set it up, and there was a card waiting for me. <laughs> a clear, lucite card made out of plasticky, some kind of sort, and it has a name on it. Basically, it looks like a viewfinder, what you would see when you look through it, which is a pretty good idea. Uh, but it's Sam Green Photography. <laughs> Sam was over here the other day after the Ella Macias interview, mm -hmm. uh, and he was here with his girlfriend, Sam. <laughs> and I guess he decided that he wanted to leave his card up there to possibly get it on Raw Talk. Touche. That's a clever idea. Touche. Touche, sir. Poo poo. <laughs> I love how when we went up there and, and you saw the I Shoot Raw sticker and you're like, what is this plastic thing? I'm this? like, I didn't do and this. You're like, it's Sam Green's card. I'm like, that clever bastard. <laughs> Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk episode number 83. This one is somewhere around the fro versus no fro idea where I interviewed Adam Elamachias who is out on the road currently with a day to remember. I finally remembered it <laughs> and he uh, it was a very interesting interview. It was. So that's going to come. This is kind of a very news a concert oriented news type show this week because yeah, there's a is. lot of things that happened plus getting to interview Ella Macias plus I went and photographed him photographing the band and put out that video that's like 40 minutes of me editing the photos which I think people really like seeing the process of editing photos um, that's over on the site right now it's fronosphoto.com for this podcast fronosphoto.com slash raw hyphen 83 and uh, yeah, so I'll just tell people raw real quick talk about hyphen that. 83. Oh yeah, raw talk hyphen 83. Yeah. Sorry, thank you. Um, basically, when I photographed him, I went out and shot with you were there as well. Yep. He got me a lanyard and you had a pass for yourself. Yeah, he didn't get me a lanyard. I'm sorry, I'll give you my lanyard. <laughs> no, it's whatever. Fine. It's just like it got us backstage. For <laughs> yeah, I got stuck to the three song limit. But yeah, which was pretty tough. But we'll talk about that coming up. And uh, the photos that I got of him. I went through and I picked my keepers and then I edited all of them. I think there was 33 or so that ended up being the ones that I edited. But I started off the video showing the six best of the best without you know, with the final edits and said, if you want to stick around and watch the other edits, you can do that after this. So it was like 30 some minutes of editing. Nice. And I, I like doing it because I'm going to sit there and edit anyway. I might as well. I don't know what kind of notes he's thinking about writing over there. Sutter. What were you doing? The only note I wrote was at 2.40, Steven said uh, a bad word. What did, did he I? say? What did I say? He said bastard. That is not a bad word. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just writing down all of my No, 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 no that's fine. Notes. Just keep writing any bad word. <laughs> now I have to write down what I said. <laughs> yeah, you, what time did you say bastard? 4.28. Bastard? <laughs> 430 bastard well I mean maybe we're watching Game of Thrones and it was the bastard there's lots of bastards in that show there is <laughs> Anyway, uh, so anyway, photographed El Macias. We'll have his interview coming up later. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the Christina Perry show last, what was it, Sunday? Saturday? It was Saturday? Yes, Saturday. Yeah. I didn't sing Human. I mean, uh, Jar of Hearts. You weren't shouting it in the no, crowd? No, no, no. I was filming it. To oh, share you? with the readers, to be like, look, look, it's Jar of Hearts. And when I got in the car today, I was driving after my workout on the radio was Jar of Hearts. <laughs> and I started to sing, and I'm like, I want to cover this song. Do you want to see me cover this song? Hashtag Jared covers Jar of Hearts. Or Fro covers Jar of Hearts. Either way, I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to break gonna out. Say, you're going to do it regardless. We're going to break out that expensive uh, Rode microphone that we haven't used yet. Rode Classic 2. The Rode Classic 2, and we're going to do it. And I'm going to sit at the piano, and we'll film it, and it'll be cool. And I'll have a ton of reverb from this clearly awesome acoustic environment we could do it inside the hallway near matis and then put well, up what we need to do is just we, blanket the crap out of i some have closet an air mattress have. yeah I and mean, we could block me in the corner just you have a closet around here somewhere right i have the elevator <laughs> no not the elevator that's like the worst closet uh well, no i have the bathroom yeah i was gonna say the bathroom. we could do your upstairs bathroom probably and just blanket the crap out of it and do it in there all right all right record it you know anyway the show was fun she was great uh picture after was awesome and then we did a day to remember how was your shoot there it was good uh i checked out the pictures uh two nights ago and they were pretty solid for the most part but as i mean you you were in there too with me in the pit it was freaking tough because first of all the security guards in that pit were as wide as the pit so um, you couldn't get around them what you're trying to say is they were fat i was saying that without saying that yeah so <laughs> the security guards were fat they weren't big they were fat. There's a difference between big and fat. 
but so basically we, what he's trying to say is they were fat <laughs> we couldn't get around them at all which was really no, you tough couldn't. uh we were up against the stage to the point where i had to use my fish eye it was so or i was switching between that and my 16 to 35 the whole time um the lighting wasn't the best. I mean, well, it was, it's the truck, and they didn't bring any extra light. Exactly. With them. So they used which was that, what was there, and, and I was at sixty four hundred, like four hundred of a second. I should have went a little higher, but it was what it was. And then you had to contend with crowd surfers the whole show. Crowd surfers the entire time. This is more of a harder act. So it, the entire time there was just crowd surfers galore everywhere, and the the barricade kept getting pushed farther and Did farther it really? up. Yeah. In the beginning, if you saw, it was getting like pushed slowly. Wow. Because there were so many people there, and there kids were. were crazy. Well, what well, was crazy, we went, we went out to dinner with the band beforehand. Yeah, and I, you didn't I, even I, realize I didn't that. know. I just thought this was a cool guy to talk to. He didn't look like a lead singer. Yeah, it was the singer and the one guitarist. But they were awesome. Really nice guys. Yeah. And what's so cool is when you sit with them, especially, I didn't know who they were, but listening to them talk about loving playing the smaller shows mm-hmm. so they can get close Closer to the fans. I saw the lead singer during the show. Every time a crowd surfer would come up, not every time, but he tried to fist pump them yeah. just to make them a part of the show yeah. while he's singing. It was awesome. Yeah. So they put on a really good show. They were good guys. Um, my show. We talked about my shots already, mm-hmm. and uh, you just focused on Al Macias, right? The yeah, entire time. I, I started with the idea that I was going to shoot some of the band, but then I was like. I'm going to focus on him because the light for the band wasn't going to be good no, it and I wasn't. was and I needed something that I thought would be cool so I was like yeah let's focus on him and I followed him around and shot him across the stage and shot him working and I love that because I was focusing on just that so I had a, a task to accomplish, and that's how you make sure you stay focused on yeah. the shoot. You you may want to shoot everything, but especially if you're on tour with a band, you could be like I'm going to focus on drummer shots tonight. That's, or I'm going to focus on X. You know, that's what you can do on exactly. the road. Um, obviously, I didn't have that opportunity here. It was just shooting him. But it was good. And and I think the band said to him after the show, what, you have your own photographer <laughs> just following you around? Because they notice. Band, yeah. They notice that when you're in the pit and I'm not even shooting Well, it's them. hard not to notice with a giant fro running around. I forget about not that all the time. Not even facing the stage. <laughs> <laughs> you're like back of the stage facing the crowd like shooting Adam the entire time did you see me back there I saw you a little bit but we were on the opposite sides in the photo pit and there's only one other kid in there that was shooting um, so that was nice the pit was open sure. besides the security guards four large security guards yeah and the pit was maybe what two feet wide if that no about this two feet that's wide. about three feet <laughs> is it wide yeah my body length plus my elbows All right, yeah about that it was it was tight yeah, um, Sutter, <laughs> how that? are you today? I'm doing swell. So Sutter's doing swell. Last week he shows up in a um, he shows up in a flotation device. Marty McFly. This week, Marty McFly. This week I get home and I see this kid in all denim <laughs> with a freaking knit cap on that his girlfriend probably knitted for him. Yeah, <laughs> is, that, is that a Kuji cap? I. He Don't doesn't know what Kuji is. <laughs> I have Kuji sweaters. I the still real have Kuji deal Kuji sweaters. Kuji sweaters. They're so expensive. Well, how was your week, Sutter? It was good. Hanging out. Not much. I don't know. Is that all? I throw it to you for some kind of speaking. Some sort of speaking. And I, you come up with how much does an Instagram weigh? Fuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just, uh, how uh, much does a hipster it. weigh? <laughs> and he's what not you, writing. <laughs> I just said the F word. And oh, he didn't take it. Oh, sorry. Think that. Sorry. Let me, uh, let me get that real Ear quick. Earmuffs. Uh, I mean, so the joke was, how much does an Instagram weigh? Yeah, no, it's how much does again. a hipster weigh Shit. an Instagram? <laughs> All right, moving on. Time for photo news. I digress. We, we got to move on. Yeah. Uh, before that, we had the Ken discussion last week. We did. Very, very, very popular show. Yes. It, I wasn't attempting to stir a pot. I've realized that in the past... You've just been holding it back for quite some time. I have been holding it back. I've been... I, I go through this... Can you move your pen? Thanks. Is that better? Yeah, it was just... It, it was on me. Um, In your angle? I, no, it was just on me. You know, it's just like distracting. Okay. I, I've, you get to a point where you... I've, I've always not been afraid to speak out. And that is sometimes received poorly. Or not poorly, but you get people that don't like you. And you get people that do like you because they agree or they don't agree. And then what happens is if you try to appease everybody, then you appease nobody. Right. And, and so it felt like for a long while I've been holding back certain things and not saying what I truly feel about certain things because I don't want to get negative comments and I don't want to deal with it. But this thing was was one of those one of those things. And I said that I reached out to him about it first. And mm-hmm. I said, do you believe in what you wrote? 
And he came back with me with that other thing that basically said, yes, and if I put it out, it's going to be what I believed in. And it was just like, well, I, I'm not going to sit here and let people find the site. And there were some comments that were, why would you call him out? Why would you do this? You need to just let it go. It's not professional. But when I, the way that I look at it is that he is so large on the internet and in search results on Google that he shows up before Nikon when you search Nikon, wow, basically. Wow, really? Anything, any lens, any because as soon as he puts it up, it's indexed into Google really quick because he's been around since 96 blogging and giving out this information that he feels is the right information because that's his opinion, mm -hmm. right? And I have the opinion of otherwise. And I just felt what... The reason I thought it was time to say something was... So many people find his site first. And if they, for some reason, find his site or they find that podcast first, then maybe they will see the difference and still be able to make up their mind based off of what I had to say and based off of what he had to say. I don't believe that what I say is the gospel. I don't sit there and say, you have to shoot raw. Just try it for yourself and determine if it works for you. Do whatever you want, whether it works for you or if it works for you, that's all that matters, right? Right. I, I just I'm all I'm all of the opinion of listening to what people have to say and then deciding for yourself what works best. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, they, they call it an opinion for a reason because it's not the end all be all. It's no. what you personally feel. I just it's, felt that what he was saying yeah. is dangerous to photographers. And I have no problem speaking out against something because if if I don't I feel like if I don't do it, nobody's going to do it. And now that I have a reach, I can do it. Yeah. But I have to be careful about what I say when it comes to certain things because you have to have your facts straight. And you are careful about that kind of stuff. You just have to be able to defend or back up what you're saying. Yeah. And, and really, that's why I'm careful with certain things. Before I do it, I do my research to make sure I get it right. Definitely. Photo news. Photo news. First up, we got rumored specs for the GoPro Hero 4. They leaked from a website called DJI SE. Uh, some of the main features include 4K video at 30 frames per second, which uh, which is up from, what, 14 frames a second? I believe it was, it was 14. 12. 12, 14, something around that. Well, now it's 30. Uh, 13 megapixel sensor, I think up from 12. Uh, talk How many megapixel? 13 now. I, okay. I think it was 12 before? Yeah, or 14. I mean, I'm, whatever. I don't know. But I don't know the exact They're saying 13 specs. megapixel. Uh, talk of a new lens for shooting in low light, which will be nice. Uh, 1080p at 120 frames per second and 720p at 240, which is great for the action stuff. Uh, HDR setting. Um, I'm not sure if that is just for stills or video. I'm assuming it's for stills, but who knows. Uh, an electronic image stabilization they'll have. Uh, uh, come on. And it's expected to arrive this summer. Uh, probably around three hundred forty dollars. Right, it would be well, like normal price. I think it would be four hundred bucks. Three forty doesn't make any sense. Again, these are rumors or specs of mm -hmm. possibly. It makes sense. It could just be somebody guessing yeah. at what may come next, which makes sense which to say. This that. is pretty much what everyone is assuming is going to happen anyway. Right, three four hundred bucks. It's about right. Mm -hmm. um, watch the thing that Gizmodo did where they did a heads up with five or six different six different action cameras, action cams yeah. and the GoPro Hero 3 Plus came out on top. Did it? I it didn't did. watch that. They were thing. hoping that something else would beat it up or beat it out or beat it off, but it didn't. <laughs> so they they said it. Now we have a GoPro Hero 3, yeah. the black edition, and that's what I've been using for a long time it's racist, and it has so racist. Racist? <laughs> what, cuz I didn't buy the silver edition? Yeah. All right. Um I bought the black edition because it's better. I want to get better. <laughs> Bleachers. Good yes. song. Spotify it. From the guy from Fun, but the guitar player from Fun. Jack Antonoff. Jack Ant dating Lena, Lena Dunham. Du yeah. Not that you'd get her name right if I didn't say Probably it. Probably wouldn't. <laughs> Lena Dunham. I pronounce everything wrong. Lena Dunham. <laughs> um, so I found so many quirks with this GoPro Hero 3. Yeah. Quirks since day one. And one of the quirks is when you when you charge a battery, you have to turn the camera on, plug it into the USB, then turn the camera off. It will charge with it on, but if I plug it in with it off, then this emergency light on the back lights up and it's not actually charging. Then what I've realized is now after it fully charges, this didn't happen all the time, is now it turns on the Wi-Fi on its own. The blue light starts blinking. So many little issues yeah, all the time. And I probably need to update the firmware. It just was such a bitch to update the firmware the first time. I remember. That it was just like, what? 
But now with the Hero 3 Plus, they let you update the firmware from the app. Mm -hmm. So it's progressing. Yeah. So hopefully the 4 will be very good. I can't see why we wouldn't invest. I wouldn't invest in the 4. I buy it at Allen's because Allen carries it. And then come as far as terms go with uh, editing and, and post with the GoPro, it's such a pain in the ass because you have to, you, it's five frames off every time yeah. for some reason. The audio always gets a little off by the end. It's like... Well, you get those four gig files. Yeah, four and it gig splits. files splits in half, which is around 17, 18 minutes at 1080p. And... The files are freaking huge. Ginormous. Because They're bigger than the D600 files. And what I don't understand is I always thought it was just a more of a bit rate. It was a higher bit rate like Canon or something. But it's about the same as Nikon, which is about 20 megabits a second. And it's still double the size. So it must be the codec they use or something. I don't know. Yeah, and it's not even using ProTune. No, it's not. And it's still crazy compressed. Uh, next up, we have, uh, after we bashed it lit just last week, Lytro came back and hit us with the second generation of the Lytro. It's called the Illume. Uh, first off, the new Lightfield camera looks like an actual camera now, not that rectangle lipstick. thing that they had. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lipstick. Um, it's more like a Micro Four Thirds kind of body. Uh, includes a 40 mega array resolution one inch sensor, which is four times larger than the first generation. Uh, it's Android powered with the Lightfield Engine 2.0. Uh, eight times optical zoom, which is really nice, equivalent to 30 to 250 millimeter lens with a constant f2 aperture. So that is great. Uh, four inch 800 by 480 tiltable touchscreen, and it's max shutter of one four thousandth of a second. Uh, exposure controls that include program mode, ISO priority, shutter priority, and manual. And this is what Lytro CEO Jason Rosenthal says. Jew. <laughs> In quotes, uh, if camera 1.0 was film-based and camera 2.0 was the transition from film to digital, we're at camera 3.0. It's about collecting very rich information about the world. End quote. Uh, the Lytro Loom, this thing's going to be available starting July 15th for $1,600. And you can pre-order it now for $100 cheaper if you want to get it. So it's a big upgrade. Um, <laughs> what do you think about this? Uh, <laughs> well... I got pissed off first and foremost that they didn't show it to me three weeks ago when I was in Chicago. I got pissed off that we included it in photo news, that we didn't include it in photo news, but we bashed it and they announced it. Right uh, but it wasn't, it was before, it was after we did the photo news. That's what I mean. Last yeah. week. But, you know, I, I met the guy, I was in Chicago, they were talking about cameras, but they refu they're trying to sell the old camera, which is a joke. He refused to give me information about the new one so that I could then report on it properly, which I didn't even put up a report because I didn't even receive a press release. Until it actually got announced No, I didn't public. get a press release. Yeah. I didn't get one. So I called them on the phone. I called their number on their website, hoping to get Corey, uh, left a message, got a call back from Corey, which was cool because she's cool. You love Corey. I love Corey. <laughs> She was so cute. Look, she got like blonde hair, right? She's blonde hair. Mm -hmm. It's all cute. It's got like the stop, <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. I'm blushing. Did you guys have another walk and talk? We didn't have another walk and talk. We were on the they phone. Talk I don't think I ever have a chance. <laughs> What'd you say? Business. So they talk business. Yeah, I never have a chance when I sit there and I say I hate your camera. I hate the business you're working for. I look, Topher, who's the guy with. Uh, Lytro said that they want to get one into my hands, which is what I asked for. I, she's like, what do you want? I said, I want a camera. The only way that I can legitimately give my opinion on it before actually seeing it is to, is to use it. Now, I can give my opinion on what I think about what they've done. It doesn't have a viewfinder. If you're going to call something a professional camera, put a freaking viewfinder on it, even if it's an electronic viewfinder. And it doesn't make sense for me to have a four-inch screen. Why not just make it talk to a, cam uh, a phone? Just put a dock on the damn back of the thing and let the phone be the, the screen for it. I know it's different, but maybe that would save some money and drop the price below a thousand bucks that you're saving on the screen. We don't know what a mega ray is. I still can't figure out a use for the camera. Is it mega ray? Yeah, mega ray. Mega ray. <laughs> As Stephen writes, Lytro, the new Lytro has a 40 mega ray sensor. What that is in megapixels? I don't know because nobody knows. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Do you know what movie that's from? I don't know what movie. Spaceballs. Oh, Spaceballs. Spaceballs. I used to have that on DVD. I, I used to. He, he used to. Sutter. He used to have it on DVD. You probably uh, VHS. 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 No. No. What? Uh. Beta. Beta. Do you even know what beta is? I do, but I don't know enough. What's beta? Isn't it like um, 
sort of like a floppy disk in a way? No. Or am I like really off? You're so far off. All right. Well, then I don't know what it okay, is. Okay. So Sutter, Sony back in the, the, the 80s. Likes, Before we were born, you know, so we should know about it. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> to make proprietary things. So basically what happened is there was, you remember... What the hell? HD DVDs? Was that what it was called? Yeah, it was HD DVDs and before Blu-ray, Blu-ray. right? And right. one won over. And yeah, this time Blu-ray Sony won. This time Sony won. And I'll tell you why. But I'll tell you why basically in the old one. So this is this is good photography talk. Trust me. Oh, yeah. Beta. No, oh, but yeah. This is good for people <laughs> to know. It's like Sony doing the XQD card. Sony doing the memory freaking stick. Sony doing beta max. All these failing. And- Don't forget, though, that beta is con- super beta is continued to be used today in high-end broadcasting for tape because it was better quality on a smaller tape. The problem was that Al Bundy, the Bundy, you know the Bundys? No? I do know the Bundys. I know the name. Oh, my God. He doesn't know the Bundys. <laughs> he doesn't know who the Bundys are, I feel man. like I do. Al Bundy? Wasn't that? Bud Bundy? Okay, I, I think Peg I know you're Bundy? talking about Al. Married, married with, with children? children. Yeah, 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 yeah. How'd that theme song go? I always he used the same it's newspaper Frank for Sinatra. twenty years. But what, how did it go? I've, which song was it? I don't remember. You just called me out on it. Now you're. Not, I don't remember. So Let me get to my beta. story. You guys oh, keep interrupting. interrupting you. That's weird. Stop interrupting my stories. <laughs> go, I got it. both of you guys. I mean, this is supposed to be shorter to this week. <laughs> so the beta tape is a smaller tape. My mom bought a beta recorder in the eighties. So that she could go to Disney with us and film us. I actually still have it at home. But it was a smaller tape deck. Um, where was I going with all this? I have no idea. Spaceballs. S- you had it on beta. I had it on beta. About Sony succeeding for Okay, once so what something. happened, the way that Sony lost it is that the porn industry got behind VHS and started putting out things on VHS. <laughs> so that's how... That pushed people to have beta uh, had VHS players That's because funny. back then you didn't have the internet, so you couldn't. Back in the in the in the eighties, Stephen, you couldn't just <laughs> dial up you porn <laughs> to get the up. porn. I once found one at my my house. It was called the Sex Boat. All right, earmuffs. If you if you get offended by this kind of crap, don't give me crap for talking about it. But I'm it's serious. I found it. It was from nineteen eighty. <laughs> it was from before I was born. It was called the Sex Boat. <laughs> It's a topic for another day. Yes. But anyway, um, that's it. Okay. I have no idea where that was going. I, I don't ap- either. I apologize <laughs> to anybody who doesn't know where that was going. But if you had beta, let me know what you thought of it. Uh, Toshiba announced what they're calling the world's fastest micro SD cards, uh, which comply with the new UHS-2 standard. Hey, did. The new cards write eight <laughs> times faster than the predecessors, and they read three times faster. Uh, the max read speed is 260 megabits a second, and write speed of 240 megabits a second. What's up? How many mega rays does it have? <laughs> three million. I don't know. About three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, about true freighter right there. Uh, this will be good for shooting 4K though on, like, say, a GoPro or something. If it the new one supports, say, the UHS-2 standard, uh, available in both 32 and 64 gig capacities. No price yet or avail- availability on when it's going to be announced. Um, so we'll see when it does get announced. But maybe it'll be like a conjoined announcement with GoPro 4. Who knows? Uh, meanwhile, photographer Brandon. Kaywood released a new photo series that documents first responders. I don't know if you see. Did you see these at all? Nine. <laughs> well, they're really interesting. Uh, the images are very cinematic. They're really heavy, composited, and edited, uh, ranging from like an EMS team to firefighters to nurses to police officers and a bunch more. Uh, all the people in the images are real first responders, too, and not models. Uh, here's, in his own words, how he describes the set of images in quotes. This series is a celebration of our community's guardian and a memorial to the healers that put us back together when our bodies are broken. The women and men in this series are those who inspire our children to be noble and brave. They do what they do. They do what they do, not for reward, but because they want to make our community, our home, and our country a better place. Uh, though they don't wear capes, they are heroes, end quote. Aw. He has a whole behind-the-scenes video on how he did the series, though. It's, it's really good stuff. I mean, the images are great. Whoever's behind the editing on these does a really good job. I don't know if it's him or he sends them out. But, yeah, it's good stuff. You need to check it out. Thank you, sir. And uh, you Steve. guys, too. Any comment? No, no comment. All right. Uh, I'm video- just trying to speed it up myself. Hey, it's fine with me. Video uh, samples of Nikon Hacker's bitrate firmware on the D800 are now online. This brings a standard 24 megabits a second uh, bitrate up to 64 megabits a second. So there's also side-by-side comparisons of the original Nikon bitrate and the new Nikon Hacker, hacker firmware. 
Uh, there is more noise, though, on the Nikon Hacker video, but that's basically because there's less compression and with a little um, noise reduction in post, it pretty much cleans up very well. But there's not really a big difference. So, I mean, if you want to save on space, in my opinion, I think 24 is fine, whatever. Uh, a new camera from moving on, a new camera. Will you only get 12 on a card? Oh, maybe yeah, probably. 13. Maybe 13 if you're lucky. And they're like two second clips on a 64 gigabyte card. Uh, a new camera from Leica, Leica called the Leica T, the T apparently standing for touchscreen, accidentally leaked online after the website went live for a short period of time, which was then taken down. Uh, similar to Hassi's Lunar Camera, this is Leica's premium build, which is an all-aluminum APS-C camera. They're saying the new camera is stripped down to basically the bare essentials, kind of like the Nikon DF. Uh, specs include 16.5 megapixel APS-C sensor, 5 frames per second, full HD video at 30 frames per second, Wi-Fi enabled, 3.7 inch touchscreen LCD, 16 gig internal memory, which is surprising, uh, and it's expected to cost way overpriced as usual, $3,000 for the body only. There's leaked photos on the website along with um, the wording from the site before it was taken down of exactly like what it's all about and all that good stuff. And moving forward, we have... Did I ever give my opinion on the Lytro today? Or did I totally forget and just go right into talking about beta? I mean, we talked about Lytro, I think. We, we talked about yeah. it. Yeah. You said that about Corey you and wish it had a oh, viewfinder, so electronic viewfinder, if it's going to be a professional camera. Is that what you camera, were thinking of the entire get time? Get dollars by putting the screen externally right. to a phone. See, there you go. So what happened, I forgot to say... It's my ear is ringing right now. That's not good. Um, Topher mentioned that they want to get one into my hands as soon as possible. So hopefully they'll send me one or he'll fly out here and bring one so that we can use it. And what I wanted to say is I still don't see a use for I don't understand the use of uh, of this thing. I, I don't understand a practical use. It's been out for two years. The first one. Hold on, Sutter. And I still don't understand. OK, what? Um. Well, with like a lot of commercial work, people will shoot plates, which is they'll shoot every focal length at a bunch of different exposures at each fo or not uh, at focusing, not focal length. So with the Lytro, what they could do is they could shoot a blank plate and then with their subject and they could change their focus field and everything like that. So and do what with use. it? Instead of focus stacking, pretty much. No. But what do you do? Do you save the Lytro image? Can you save a Lytro image? Could you, I've never you used one personally, but... I have used one. And it, and again, it's still not sharp. There's no sharp aspect of the image. Now, it's great that you can lay the thing down and literally t I could touch this pen with the front glass of the lens and it would still focus. Yeah. That stuff's incredible. That type of thing is awesome. But I still don't... I have the the original, and I went out with an open mind to go shooting the thing and can't figure out what the hell the point of using it is. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some practical use, but I mean, if you're, say, a landscape photographer and you have all the time in the world, there's not really much use. I can see maybe like a photojournalist or something using it in the future. Just say like I if they need that. to shoot, shoot something and they misfocus by a hair and they come back in Lytro software and can refocus in the, you know what I mean, depth of field wise. Sure. I don't know. We'll have to I'm play with it. Assuming what you could do that's with it. That's kind of a neat uh, yeah. way to look at it as photojournalism. Yeah, that's the only thing I could think of as far as I mean, concert photography maybe, but not with that kind of. I mean, lens. with forty mega rays, I don't know what your <laughs> ISO power. Capability I mean, you need at least is. like eighty mega rays to, to make it any good. So maybe one twenty. Maybe one twenty. So we're about eight years away. I would say about that. All right. Uh, new old footage was posted online that features astronauts playing around with the very first digital camera in space during the 1991 space shuttle. Uh, the camera was called the Kodak Hawkeye 2. It was a hacked camera that featured a Kodak-built 1.3 megapixel CCD sensor that was attached to uh, the back of a Nikon F3 body. That must have been so expensive. I know. Because I remember the original ones were in the $40,000 range. Uh, so the camera was tethered to a processing unit and power supplied by a 20-pin serial connector with the photos going right into a 100-megabyte hard drive, and which is probably like freaking terabyte or gig of whatever. No. What's past a terabyte? A petrabyte. Petrabyte? There's probably like petrabytes back then. A ton, of, like a ton of memory. 100 megabytes saying. was yeah. a lot. Well, it's a 1.3 megapixel camera, probably shooting a compressed JPEG. Probably wasn't shooting. It was actually probably doing TIFF. Who you knows? Probably if fit about 12 on the hard drive. Maybe 12. Maybe 12. Uh, the interesting part is how they showcased the lens, which was equivalent to a thousand millimeter lens. Uh, now, this is what blew my mind. They had two teleconverters on the actual lens, both a 1.4 
and a two times converter. And the guy in the video, the astronaut's like, yeah, it's really good quality that we have the teleconverters and all that kind of stuff. It's clear glass and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I can't imagine how much the quality was, how poor the quality was with two converters on. Well, yeah. And, and part, a 1.3 megapixel CCD sensor. But it's not even a full frame. It's not even an APS-C. They were much smaller. And that's why you had these large... I didn't... I remember back, I was shooting out at the baseball field a long time ago. And this guy had... Um, he had one of the Kodak Nikon cameras. And he was trying to explain to me the crop factor. And I didn't, I didn't what, get is it. Is it like three times? To- like I don't crazy? remember. I don't remember what it was. But I'm like... But but wait, so you're going to take a picture and it's only going to give you this amount so you don't know what you're getting? I, I couldn't wrap my hand around my head around crop factor then. Well, I mean, a CCD sensor, isn't that like a third of the size of like an APS-C or well, something? Well, a CCD sensor could be any size. That's just the sensor. Okay. CCD the is a, a charge. I'm just thinking of the general CCD sensor size. Charge coupled device. Yeah. Then you have CMOS, mm-hmm. but the originals were the CCDs and it would just have been a smaller size. Yeah. And I didn't understand because I'm like, well, well, if I'm looking at a, a, a portrait of a somebody, will then it only show his eye when you're done shooting the whole portrait? I couldn't, I couldn't get it. Obviously, I get it now. What? I, it was, <laughs> no, it, that's it funny. Was before did Because it mean, makes it, sense. I just didn't, I couldn't, ra- I had to see it and I didn't get to see it. Yeah. Like I would have seen it if I, well, actually, yeah, if I would have looked through the, See that I don't get. If I w- I gotta have to buy one of those off of of off of eBay just to They're buy. They're probably it. like five dollars. They're now. probably like five dollars. But looking through the viewfinder, I didn't know if you look through the viewfinder and see a full frame viewfinder because it was built off of a full frame film camera. And but when you got the image, it was cropped. See, that, that's, that's what I couldn't wrap my head around. I'm assuming that's what happened. Had to be because they didn't have a smaller viewfinder with a smaller mirror. Yeah. It was a. It was they took an N90s, the kind, the one that's on my door. Added about like eight inches to the bottom of it with processors and huge slots for these cards, and where you only got twelve images, legitimately, not really, but still. <laughs> but that's what they put. Okay, I'm done. But it was interesting. It's I'm gonna ca- have to buy one. It's kind of like the opposite of uh, of a viewfinder that only has like ninety five percent coverage, right? Because in in you know you're getting more of right. a picture versus less. So here you had a hundred percent viewfinder coverage, but you only got like half the image, thirty percent of if, a frame, yeah, if that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move on. This is the last story, which is the big one. Oh, what I week. decided to do. Go ahead. Go, go. Well, what do you want to do? No, go. I'm, I'm going to run the, we're not going to run the interview during the podcast. Oh. They're going to be, it makes no sense. It's already over on the website. Okay. Because it doesn't make sense to run it. They can just go listen to that because it's about the news. And if they want to hear more, they can do that. Okay. Sounds good. Save us on a little so, bit of time. A lot of controversy this week with concert photography. Uh, the Red Jumpsuit apparatus, apparatus, a band that used to be somewhat big, uh, stole a photographer named Rowan Anderson's photo without any compensation. Do you feel like a man when you put her down? Or do you around. feel sorry now when I'm on the ground? No, and he, I think, isn't it when he pushes you around or something? When he pushes Do you feel like a man when he... When you push her around. Yeah, that's do it. Do you f- but he doesn't say man. He goes, Do you feel like a man when you push her around? Do you feel sorry now when I'm on the ground? I don't know. <laughs> I used to well, I actually used to watch this band at like Warp Tour back in two thousand six when Warped they like Tour. first came out. They played the main stage that year, I remember, and everyone went to see them. And then the following year, I went again, and they were like on some like side stage, that, and like fifty people were there to see them. They just totally dropped off the radar. Yep. I don't know. I mean, that's that's bands, you know. You make it or you don't. Um, so anyway, uh, this band used to be somewhat big, and they stole a photographer named Rowan Anderson's photo. No compensation, no credit, no permission, nothing. I don't know. If we use the word stole more like they used it without permission. Yes. I, I just. Because I was thinking when I was naming the video. I mean, they didn't literally steal it. Well, but I didn't want to say steal because people use by accident images all the time. Yeah. But go ahead. We'll, we'll keep getting into this. Uh, the Wait, can I just jump into that real quick? Just because you, I mean, you say you used it without permission, but like ignorance isn't an excuse for the law in a way, you know? So like no, if I they know accidentally that. take it, they're still stealing it. Thank I'm, you, sir. I'm just trying Thank to. I'm just looking at it at both sides. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> Uh, the photographer filed, fired back with a huge, lengthy blog post, though, about the whole thing. Uh, it starts with, this is going to go into really into detail. Well, he followed, he, he didn't fire back, because I'll just talk about the interview. He did, because I got him on the phone, he's in Australia. He started it with a huge, lengthy blog post, I should say. But he contacted them before that, and before... See, you know more details about than me, because Well, he I did do, because I talked to him, but, he, but before he wrote the blog post, uh-huh. he reached out to them about giving him credit. Gotcha. 
and then they came back to him with the LOL, the, let me the get smiley that face and stuff. You, all right. Uh, so it starts with the band using one of his images and, and cropping it and applying a filter to it on Instagram. Uh, the watermark was cropped out due to the you know the stupid one to one recropping that they have on Instagram. Uh, after several comments on the image and emails to the band, the band then then credited him on the image. Um, so they edited the Facebook post, you know, photo credit. Uh, and then he initially wanted the image taken down, so he emailed them again saying that they need to take it down, and they responded with a smiley face saying, in quotes, go for it. Uh, after he threatened to take the matter further, uh, the band finally responded to the email with their own saying, in quotes, you have no legal claim as the photo is credited and is, and is not posted for a monetary gain and features our likeliness and image, not yours. Also, you have... You have just got yourself banned from any festival or show we ever play again in that region for life. Congrats, end quote. Oh, <laughs> I've been banned from the Red Jumpsuit Apparatuses show. Oh, my God. Oh, my life my is life. over. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go cut myself. I'm so emo. <laughs> um. <laughs> You got more? Yeah, I got a lot more. So he responded by saying he would take legal action if they didn't take it down and demanded an apology. Uh, the band then fired back again with the following statement in quotes. We welcome the lawyer and his response as for the LOL, it was funny. Life is funny. If you want to take it any other way, that's fine with us. As for the tables turning rem remark, our music is everywhere legally and we won't let it go like all other professionals try it out sometime. Uh, most unknown photographers are happy to have worldwide known bands use their photos and consider it an honor you are clearly an example of the opposite end quotes oh no no that goes goes on don't send don't send any more threats or you'll be hearing from our lawyer have a nice day winky face end quote um, then the man got in touch with the editor of the publication he had photographed their show for and presented a list of events to try and get anderson in trouble this was clearly uh, this was cleared up fairly quickly when Anderson sent the editor their entire email conversation and the company instead blacklisted the band and not him, which I think is great on their part. Uh, they didn't name the publication, by the way. Um, so here's the email from the publication to the photographer in quotes, as I suspected, you have been entirely professional against a barrage of uh, unprofessional and juvenile behavior from the band. Rest assured that the band is now blacklisted. It's a shame that they've acted in this manner. We support you 100% on this, which is awesome. Um, now, the image was then eventually removed, and the band did pay him and apologize, but not before calling him a tool publicly on Twitter and linking to his website, um, which they then reverted and deleted and then said, like, we're sorry, Rohan, or Rowan, I mean, and all that kind of stuff. Now, do you want to comment on this before I go into the other Three Days yeah, Grace story? Yeah, let's comment on that before okay. we get into the Three Days Grace story. I, uh, a fro reader reached out and said he's friends with Rowan. Gotcha. And so I emailed Rowan and he emailed me back. And last night around midnight, that's why I look tired in the video, is I got him on. And he's and an Aussie, right? He's, I believe he's Australian. I mean, yeah. He's got a great accent. And if you want to see the interview, there's no reason for us to run it here. It really doesn't I'll make just sense. just an annotation. Yeah, annotation. You, we can do an annotation and I can then link that to the video. Yeah, that's so, right. Okay, good. Yeah, so you can click on the annotation on the screen to see the interview with him and hear him. And I, I listened to him, let him talk, let him say his side of the story. And initially, he, he pretty much said if they would have gone ahead and credited him and used the original image, it wouldn't have been a big deal. No, not it at all. It wouldn't have been a big deal. But he said he didn't threaten them until... He got those stupid remarks Until back. Until they acted like idiots. Right. He wanted to do it professionally. He asked them to remove it or, you know, because they cropped out his other stuff, but remove it and please put up the original with my credit. And when he got this other stuff back, he said, I'm not going to just do, I'm not going to just do that. Right. I'm going to go back and say, I'm going to have to take action further if you don't remove it. And I mean, this is a big deal going on in the world right now with photography. It's it just is. happening a lot. He, I, what I said to him at the end of it, I said, uh, well, and, before I get to the end of it, is he got a he got a, a correspondence from the lead singer of the band apologizing. That's nice. The lead singer said, "We're going to pay your invoice immediately." And we don't know who it was that actually sent those emails. We or don't messages, know who right? sent the emails. The I asked him if he thought it was the management, and he said, "I think it was somebody in the band because they said our music." Yeah, I think it was so someone in the band too. Somebody responded terribly to it. I mean, obviously they have like no PR behind them, or if they do, they're they not have nothing doing a great now. Job. I didn't even know they were still a band. Yeah. You know, I mean, barely. Do you feel like a man when you <laughs> when you push a photographer around? Do you feel <laughs> sorry now? Um, so basically, I said to him, I said, I'm glad you went about it this way and didn't do it as Max Jackson did in the color run. Yeah. You know, just coming out and blatantly threatening these people and mm -hmm. trying to do it amicably. Yeah. Um, as we know how the other one went. So 
Yeah. So so he he got he got paid. He got a uh, hundred thousand clicks to his website in a matter of days, and it kept crashing. Wow. And he normally gets a hundred a month. Wow. So. I asked him, has anything come out of it yet? Have you gotten any jobs yeah, or any calls? And he said, not yet, but I'm hoping that something happens from it. Because he handled it very well. It was a good image, too. Well, he said what happened is... It is, was, yeah. Is that he, it, he wrote the article, he posted it to some friends. This was after they gave him a bunch of crap. He wrote the article, put it up, some friends shared it. It ended up on Reddit, and it went... Huge. It's Reddit, man, every time. Reddit went Blows huge, up. then Petapixel hit it, and then it got even bigger when Petapixel hit it. It's like when we, the photograph, um, I don't know the proper name for it, but the one that had all the planes. Yeah, Mike Kelly's yeah, photo. Yeah, it started on Reddit too. Oh yeah, he put it on Reddit and it just went, I don't want to use the term viral anymore. I refuse it did to go use, viral, I refuse to it use Epic. It had a lot of upclicks. Yeah. Of boots. I refuse to use Epic and viral. It went huge. I like viral better than I'm going to stick but, with huge. You can stick to your guns with that. I'm going to stick to my guns with that. It went, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. <laughs> Remind me to tell you guys what I was going to say. Probably after. something super okay. dirty or, or something. No, it wasn't dirty. It just would be, somebody would be like, you're making fun of, and I'm not going to say it. All right. All right. <laughs> but I'll tell <laughs> we'll you keep later. It for um, now. All right. So then now there's a second story. If exactly. you want to get that interview, it's over on the site. Go ahead. Yeah. A lot of details on that first story. Now, this furthering that story, Three Days Grace tour manager named Sean Hamm, uh, he got involved and commented publicly on that story. He bashed concert photographers, or I should say photographers, how he said it, uh, who ask for payment when a band shares a watermarked and credited image on their social media feeds. He says, in quotes, this is what he had to say about the whole thing. Uh, if you're a concert photographer, listen up. It's BS. All these photographers, again, photographers trying to sue bands these days. That's air quotes for those air of you quotes, listening yeah. at home. A photographer takes a photo of the band and then he put, they let you take it. It's a privilege. And you want to be paid if they post it on social networks, leaving your watermark on it. LOL. They can F off. Uh, if the band were to use it for financial gain, i.e. on a t-shirt, poster, CD, etc., I can see paying a fee. But if all you are going to do is post their is posting their work they took of you on your social networks promoting his work to millions of people who have no clue who the F he is, then he can get lost. And then he put attention all bands. Make sure nowadays you make all photographers now approve. Uh, sign a waiver stating you can use the photos of yourself however you want before you approve them to shoot your show. And he put a bunch of caps and a couple of these words and all that stuff to emphasize certain words. Um, but that's what he had to say about it. And then he went on to say, however, that the band should credit the photographer and there should be a watermark on the image when posting. So he did say that part about all it. All right. So... And he has a point. Valid points. Valid point, I would say. Sometimes. Sometimes. Stupid points. Other time. Poorly written. Second thing to remind you people out there of is that he's a tour manager. Doesn't mean that he is the a manager. manager. It means that he's in charge of waking the band up, telling them where they need to be, when they need to be there. It's a tough job. I know that. I've seen oh, yeah. it. I've seen worked with many tour managers. I don't agree that it's a privilege to shoot the band. I personally feel like if I'm going to shoot a small band today that I have a larger following then, and this is not being arrogant, this is factual, I feel that if I'm going to go shoot a small band and share their stuff out with the world, all you, got, all you readers, that I'm doing them a freaking favor at this point, giving them more publicity. Well, with your website, you're with talking about. With my website. Yeah, yeah. Right. And Definitely. I, I don't think I would blow, out of, uh, blow it out of proportion if somebody took one of my images and used it because I've uploaded a lot to Flickr, and it says they can share. Mm -hmm. There's no, it, it's copywritten, but it says share alike with attribution. Mm -hmm. So if somebody posts it, they have to attribute it back to me. And non commercially. And non commercially. And if they want to do that, I don't have a problem with that. If they're going to go and turn around and sell it, like this guy said, then they, could, they should get paid. But if somebody's going to post my image, you know, Modest does that all the time, but with permission because they they paid me for yeah, them and you have they can do down, that they, but they when other that. when other bands use my other work they make sure to to do that attribution and el Macias, you're going to hear in the same sense everybody does that that's one of the reasons why he's grown and uh, such a large following huge following because of that aspect of mm -hmm. it so this guy in terms of signing a waiver in terms of signing i would not I don't give a crap who's playing. When I show up, I am not signing a form that says they can use the images for whatever they would like. This is not happening. I draw a line through it. I was going to say, you usually don't sign it anyway. Well, I usually sign somebody else's name, put a fake email address on it, put a fake phone number on it. Postman Pro. Jim Marshall. Reach me at USPS. Yeah, Jim Marshall. 
uh, Jim at JimMarshall.com. <laughs> I mean, they don't read the things, and that's partly their problem. Yeah. And I don't care, and I don't, but I don't sign it myself, and I draw lines through things I don't want to that I don't agree to. Yeah. I actually sign my own name, but. I don't put valid emails, and I don't put my phone number on it. I put my name on it. I put Jay Poland usually for sure. Have you ever actually been contacted no, after the never. fact? I'd never have. Never. Yeah. They don't. They it's don't. It's only do if something goes it. wrong, and I. I wonder if they even keep them filed away well, for a certain amount of time, or or how that works. Scan. I don't know. It's got to be you know, so many for a whole tour. When I would give them to that girl at the electric, it's not electric factory at Live Nation. You know your favorite, uh, Rachel. Yeah, that's her name. I'll save her last name for another day. She would. She yelled at me at like Kesha. She's like, "Well, they're not going to let you shoot if you don't sign this thing." And then I just refused to sign it. And you still shot, right? And then I still shot. I'm like, "Well, here, I finally signed." She's like, "Well, it doesn't matter now." I'm like, "Yeah, well, we're going to do pull my pass." You know, it's just like, no. All right. So, what do you have to say? Uh, same thing, pretty much. I mean, I understand if uh, I understand what he's saying about using images with. You know, like certain photographers, if you're not well known or something like that, you're just starting out and a band uses your photo and they credit you. That does, to me, it, uh, it makes sense. It makes sense, but... But ask permission at least. And the whole monetary issue, I think, uh, like what he was saying, is if yeah. you use it in a commercial way, definitely but pay the photographer. What? Here, what here's the thing, though. If you post your image on Facebook with a share button... And they share it on their page by using your share button. That's what Facebook's for. Yeah. So do they need to ask permission? You uploaded it. But can can pages share individual profile pictures? Uh, I thought they couldn't do that. I thought they could only share pages stuff. It's kind of... I, I don't know. I may That's have run into that. Weird area. Yeah. But, yeah. but you... Okay. So then ask for permission. Yeah. But still, it's there. They can share it. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't know. It's just it's, it's a fine line. I mean, but at least he didn't. I don't like he what he said. Fully writes like one side about it. Yeah, exactly. He kind of took both sides technically, but but he's also talking about a crappy band. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Three Days Grace is another band that is falling apart. I mean, they just lost their lead singer last year, two years ago, about, and they have a new singer that sounds just like them. I mean, that band's slowly going downhill as well, right. in my opinion. In your opinion. In my opinion. All right, so that's that story. What else do you have? That's it, actually. That's it for Photo News. It's, uh, it's a pretty short week this week. Yeah, pretty short week that we talked a lot about. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do now is jump into the interview with Adam L. Macias, mm -hmm. uh, and followed by Gear of the Week and Wheel of Fro, which is what we'll do after this interview. But Adam was coming into town, into Philly. We knew this a couple weeks ago with the band A Day to Remember. Yep. And we then worked out getting him here on a Monday because it was before a studio session, which you would be having to do the audio for over at the radio station. Yeah, and the band was coming in for that session. Right. So he came to the, came to the loft. Mm -hmm. We did an interview here, a uh, very good interview. And then you and he drove over. You to drove the him station, to the radio yeah. station. And then we met up with him for dinner and at night to do the shoot. So the interview is really cool. Trying to figure out how somebody built such a large following on Instagram and Twitter uh, and, and just listening to what he has to say and the lens bracelets and all of those things that he's done is pretty cool. And it, it's just... It just shows you what you can do in this day and age as a photographer. So anything you want to say before we get into it? No. I mean, he's a good man. and He's a, he's a great photographer, and he really built his following up. It's, it blows my mind. Exactly. All right, so let's hear how he did it, and here is the interview with Adam L. Macias. So I've got Adam L. Macias. You got it. I, well, That's we, perfect. We've been, we've been practicing, and it isn't, I, I didn't actually look it up. Because I, I would usually what I do is I Google people and try to find an <laughs> audio clip where they're introducing themselves. Okay. But I didn't really do that. I just figured I would ask you when you got here if it was Ella Macias. You got it. So welcome to the Fronos Photo, uh, my, my place. Thank you for having me. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for stopping by on a tour. Who, who are you out with? I am out with A Day to Remember. And did you remember that day? I remembered it. I know you remembered to get here, which is good. Yes. You Ubered it, which is good. I woke up like an hour early so I could drink some water and I ate, tried to eat these oranges, but they were terrible. So I didn't eat them. What from the, oh, from the bus? Yeah. They were like, sometimes you cut or oranges open and they don't look like oranges. They got like all these little growths everywhere. That's because they're old and hard. Yeah. So I threw them away. That's usually what happens on the bus. Well, so where were you driving in from last night? We came from a city outside of Pittsburgh. Which city? I don't know. City outside of Pittsburgh. There's Steel City. We have a reader out Melville, there. Melville, maybe? I, 
I don't even know because Pittsburgh's. It was beautiful. There's a lot of hills. Yeah, we walked well, around. It's the other side of Pennsylvania. It's almost like yeah. two states. Literally, you've got Philadelphia, <clears throat> and then Pennsylvania. <laughs> Everything else. Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'd use their pencils. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so let, let's get into some history, man. Okay. Where? How did you shoot out onto the scene here? How did I shoot out on? Like, how did I get started? Yeah. I got started in high school, so basically had a camera and went to a lot of concerts, and then the promoters started letting me in for free if I would take pictures at their concerts and give them the photos. This is back in MySpace days. So. MySpace days. So yeah, just photos for their MySpace galleries, like, hey, we put this show on, come check it out. So is it, you just started as a fan going to a show yeah. with your cameras, yeah. uh, and it wasn't like you were trying to, or maybe you were, but... Not going to the largest shows. You were just going no, to yeah. shows. And maybe I should backpedal a little bit. I didn't just magically have a camera. I actually got started started by shooting self-portraits in high school for MySpace and for yearbook class. And then one of my teachers was like, hey, this looks awesome. You should do photography. Then I got a camera. Then I went to concerts. And yeah, they're small, like under 30 people sometimes, just clubs. Well, what's cool about that is a, a lot of people trying to get into the game today get discouraged because they're like, well, if I don't have a, a per, how do I make a portfolio because I can't get into any shows? Well, show up to your local bar yeah. where, a, where Mr. Green Jeans is playing and just, <laughs> or Pink Fuzzy Slippers or what, what are some of the other ones, Steven? I won't bother Steven right now, but there's some Cerebral other. Ballsy. Have you heard of that band? No. Yeah, that's a band. They good? And there's also... I don't know. <laughs> have you ever heard of Bong Hits for Jesus? No. But Bud now Hull I Surfers. Have. Yeah, no, there's a Philly band called Bong Hits for Jesus. Yes. That would be the at greatest least, merch. At least they're positive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, it, 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 you get those people that get discouraged because like, well, I can't get into big shows. Well, yeah. It's because you can't just... Everybody feels that you're just yeah, you entitled got, to everything right now. Yeah, you got you to gotta start small and build your way up and the people who start big and start there you know maybe they get a big break and stuff they don't have a foundation so when you start big you can fall off a lot easier so it's better to start small form relationships make mistakes learn along the way and then you can't just one day not have a job because you have hundreds of people who are backing you and supporting you right so you're now getting in the shows for free in <laughs> in trade right yes, yes, you're trading yes. photos uh, no, I don't mean now. I mean yeah, then. Yeah, I, I misheard it first. No, well, what do you think I said? <laughs> I thought you were talking about right now. I was like, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I don't have to pay. No, no. That, <laughs> I was saying, I was going through the progression from yeah, the yeah, beginning. Yeah. Uh, so at that point, back uh -huh. then when you were starting out, yeah. the managers would come up to you and, and basically say, hey, let us use your photos and we'll let you in for free. No? Should I, should I, should I elaborate? Yeah, elaborate. Okay. So first it was like the tour promoters. It's like the people in my city booking the shows would let me be like, hey, come to our shows and shoot them. From there, I met manager, a manager who helped me start writing emails to the band's management, and then I would get into the shows through them and be shooting for them. Now, did, were they paying you? or No. So how do you pick up a manager? Somebody came to you, or did you go to them? Uh, it was like a local band. I shot some photos of their live show, then shot some, shot some like setup photos with them, and their manager had just picked them up, and he talk to me through them basically nice so when i think of managers i'm thinking mm -hmm. of the old guys smoking cigars and it's probably not the case it's probably some 20 year old kid who he he was he was 24 he looked 40 it's like an ongoing joke he was awesome he really helped me learn the business side of things which is something that didn't really come to me naturally off the bat it was it was more of a learned thing so it was really nice to have him well that's help yeah me out. that is one of the tougher things with what we do with shooting shows is how to get in mm -hmm. how, do, how do you figure out how do you get past everybody else and start getting in so you had the manager um where does that lead us at this point uh at this point i was shooting live shows all the time uh, i was almost i was a senior in high school I was probably shooting a few shows a week a month started driving to Milwaukee, which was a big thing for me, which is like an hour from where I'm from. And uh, and at that point, I started reading out, reaching out to management for the bands who were coming through my area to do press photo shoots with them. So I was trying to like kind of meet the bands a little bit more. Do the behind the scenes yeah, stuff instead yeah. of just live where you're just in a pit for three songs and then you're out. Correct. And with shooting press photos on them came more stage access and built relationships. And do you want me to keep going? Yeah, or? keep going. So from there, just kept kind of meeting bands and my goal I would just follow them all online whenever they came through I would email their management uh and there was a few bands that I would work with maybe like three times or so and then I would have a relationship with them so they would come to town and I would go out and get food with them 
And I'm like 18, scene kid, long hair, piercing, tried to have piercings. <laughs> um, like I just wanted to be in a band. Yeah. So it was cool to me to be like, oh, I can hang out with these cool people. And did I don't you know. did you ever play an instrument? No, I'm pretty bad at that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the thing. We're we're in. We we kind of become a part of it when you yeah. start touring. You're become part of a band. Yeah. And what I have found very interesting is that. I've been recognized over certain artists when I'm out with them, mm -hmm. which is always an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. When you're with a big artist and you're walking around and people are like, Fro knows photo. <laughs> and they're like, who the hell are you? Yeah. You know, and have you, have you run into that now? Uh, yeah. I mean, and it's partially because just, I have like, sort of like you, I have, I'm bald. So the bands I'm with can call me like the beacon. So we'll uh, be walking around the streets and they won't get recognized more so because they look more normal. And then people will see my head come to me and see them or uh, like at their signings, like I'll sign their CDs and stuff like and I'm like, I'm not I don't know. I, I tried the best to not be rude about it because in the end, I'm there for the band. Yeah. So I don't want to be like, yeah, come start a signing line over here. You know, like that's not my goal. So it's kind of like. I don't know. It's weird. It's I always talk to the band about it and make sure that I'm never in, intruding. It's interesting, though, because. It seems like in an online world, mm -hmm. in an online world where Steven Eckert has to add some more echo to my voice. Anyway, in, in an, well, doing? we do it. We do echo. Mr. Movie voice. But it seems interesting <laughs> in a world where we can build a following today mm -hmm. that sometimes rivals bands mm -hmm. that it, it was. I was thinking about this yesterday where everybody wants to be a rock star. Like you always want that feeling of being a rock star, but it seems like musicians aren't where it's at as much anymore mm -hmm. it's because the industry's changed. Yeah. And then a lot of people move into tech and a lot of people became these YouTube celebrity people. And it's just, it's interesting to, to see the, the shift, especially when it comes to like merch. I have my own merch and some of my merch moves more than some bands merch. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just an interesting thing. So you moved in, you how'd the lens bracelet come up. Uh, lens bracelet started, I would say from where we left off, maybe like two years later. I moved to San Diego, California, and it was more like a business card I made. So I made it like mm. a 50 millimeter and a 7200 to have a white design, I think. And then I just gave them to a few friends and like people were fucking like stoked on them. Like they really wanted them. Yeah. And then from there, Tumblr kind of reblogged the shit out of it. <laughs> and then Photo Jojo found it. And then it just, it was kind of crazy how fast it exploded yeah steven yeah. was giving me the signal that you need to get up on the mic like okay i'm not, told doing, us to I'm not doing it good <laughs> just not, a little bit just a little bit okay just put uh, the, is it cool if i have it touch my lip yeah i was just gonna say just have your lip the no hair lip touch it okay then we'll get back to the lens bridge but i wanted to say something about the baldness you yeah. get people all the time they'll be like, well i don't have a fro i can't stand out i can't be different well you have no freaking hair so it doesn't matter <laughs> you know it really doesn't matter what direction you go you can stand out no matter what wait so you're telling me your amount of hair does not have any effect on your photography skills um no just when it gets in your face though oh, okay it's never good no yeah, it doesn't see my scene days i had really long hair before well you did you have this this haircut oh yeah you know combed over the front so how did oh, you yeah. shoot if your hair was blocking your eye i only use one eye <laughs> <laughs> that was my shut eye i didn't have to shut it oh all right no i'm just because you had the hair hair block <laughs> yeah. in the front yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got the lens bracelets. Yes. You you make it as a business card, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Trying to come up with something unique. Like my hair pick is a business card mm -hmm. when I give that to people because it's something different. Business cards are so passe at this point. They really are generic moo. You know, people go moo all the time and they think they're getting these unique things. And it's just I don't really carry business cards Nobody anymore. Uses them. Yeah. I have an iPhone. Yeah. You know, I'll take your picture. I'll take your email. I'll do something. That way I have you. I'll email you right freaking now with my information. Yeah, business cards are good in, I use them when like I'm shooting in the pit and I'm like, hey, don't have your contact. Let me get it. Can't even talk to you. Yeah. Give me your card. That's good. Yeah. In passing, can't talk to somebody. Other than that, I don't use them. Yeah. So the, that's, which is, I agree with that. And the, the lens bracelet. So you, you came up with them. People mm -hmm. started wanting them. You didn't start out in thinking it would be a business no. <laughs> so what how did you transition how were you able to pivot there and um, turn it into something honestly photo there was like between the tech blog websites and photo jojo they moved like i just remember this one day i landed in an airport and every like 10 sites had linked photo jojo and petapixel linked my site and that day i got like there's like like over like thousands were sold in like days nice and it was crazy 
And from there, it just kind of like, I was like in over my head for a few weeks. I went to the, spent like hours at the post office. Like, <laughs> So you shipped everything yourself. Back then, yeah. I was, it was the exact same way back. I used to literally handwrite each envelope yeah. until I got smart and got a labeler <laughs> and then copied and pasted the addresses and hit send. I know, right? So you used to sit there at the post office and take up lines. And out, of the, out of country orders. Oh my God. Oh, well, then filling out the, the customs yeah. forms. Oh, it's the worst. We've automated that process now, <laughs> thankfully. Thankfully. But um, yeah, so you're shipping these all out yourself. Yeah. Has it continued on? Yeah. So now I have, uh, uh, I still sell them. They're not as big as they used to be. You know, they're kind of a fad back then too, like those kinds of bracelets. They still sell, but they're not like thousands a day. Now, how about the people ripping them off? It's a lost, a lost, ba- like they're sold on all like wholesale websites. Like they're ripped off everywhere. I mean, Adorama's ripped me off. Oh, all, really? All the, all the good, all the good people too. But they did it unknowingly because those sites are so good at it. And when I reached out, those companies handled it correctly. So I, I respect them for that. You know, you make a mistake, admit it, move sure. on. Sure. And uh, they've been nice ever since. Well, it's, 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 it's an, in- it's a, it's a tough situation because it's yeah. not something you can trademark because technically you're taking something that's art. Have you have the camera companies come after you? It is trademarked. It is. Yeah, lens bracelet is trademarked. Oh, lens bracelet, the term. Yeah, because. Uh, uh, according to the lawyer who did it, it's you're taking something that is basically a functioning tool and you're putting it in a non-functioning manner, manner and using it. So it is a totally different thing. So they can sell the ripoffs. They just can't use the word lens bracelet. Right. Trademarks are such... <laughs> I've been... It's been like four years. I've been going through different things with different trademark lawyers and one says one thing, another says another. Yeah. But that's a, that's a story for another day. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't stand the that's trademark the gist lawyers. Of it. That's the gist of it. Well, that's cool. Have you... Uh, so you, you continue to move them. They still go. Where can yeah. people get them? Oh, they can get them on uh, lensbracelet.com. All right. So, and now I've seen your, uh, your, your mug all over things. You're starting to sell... Oh, my face. Yeah, your, I was like, face. mug. I was like, I don't make mugs. What your are you your face. <laughs> yeah. Started selling my face like a year ago ish. Well, I shaved my head like a year and a half ago. And I, I don't know. I'd been shooting for five years, but people didn't really pay attention to my look, I guess you'd say, until I shaved my head. So I was like, all right, let's go with it. And it were, I mean, the photo is pretty iconic. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's one of those images that it's yeah. synonymous with you. Yeah. So right. that that's definitely good. Uh, let me read some of my notes. I'll oh, read them too if you want. You want to read them? I'm reading the backside. Well, that's those are notes. Those are flying solo questions from last week. <laughs> I just keep them as the as as the paper here. So, touring with bands. How do you maintain yes. a business while uh, touring with a band on the road? Because I know how difficult that is. Yes, I've definitely been learning over the past few years. So, for a while, I tried to do both. I tried to you know, tour and do business, but now I have. One person who works for me and kind of does like all my shipping and all like the, the stuff that doesn't involve interacting with people. Yeah. And then I have another girl who works for me and she's awesome. She like helps me write my blogs, helps me take care of all the business end of things. Uh, just kind of keep my head straight so I can focus on shooting because that's what I really like to do. Sure. And I do enjoy the business aspect, but not all of the all of the decisions have to be me, you know, like just like the big ones. And then no, I hear the you. rest, but you interact with the people, which is the most important. Yeah. And that's what I enjoy the most. And I've always enjoyed. It's kind of cool. Cause I like all the fans of the bands that I get to interact with are all like 14 to 22 years old. And I think that's a really cool age to be interacting with people. Cause that's when they're like learning, growing. And when I was that age, if I had somebody like myself, I would be stoked. Yeah. You know, sure. You can, follow the bands but they don't always interact with you sure yeah. no and, th- and that's once you touch a fan mm-hmm. uh hopefully not a 14 to 8 uh, 17 year old <laughs> fan uh you have them as uh <laughs> you'd make them friends basically but you know what i'm saying yeah. i had to preface that i know what you're saying i just can't believe you said it <laughs> why well <laughs> i'm just making sure i'm just saying you don't anyway well thanks for filling me in you know i'm yeah. sure you knew that yeah so you have these people following you. You yeah. have a big Twitter following and you have a big Instagram following. Yeah. How did you build those things up? Because a lot of people want to know, how do you build a big ass following? Um, yeah. So I guess all those things rely on the people I work with. So about a year and a half ago, two years almost now, I started selling prints. And that was like a big marketing thing for me. And basically prints with bands, uh, the idea was, hey, take me out on tour let me sell prints. I make back X amount of money 
and then the spillover we can split we can do whatever we want with we can pay for flights for more things so it's kind of like pay for me with your promotion because my job didn't really exist in a paid manner at the time so another part of that is they have to credit me on everything so on instagram and twitter every time they post a photo they have to credit me and that's really where i started gaining more of my following and how it started growing was just uh, kind of being involved with the people I work with. And sure. I think when other people, you can't be selfish on Instagram and Twitter. That's the thing. You can't just self-promote. Like, it's good to, but it all revolves around interacting with people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and like, when people start using Twitter, they're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know, I'm tweeting a bunch of things. What I'm doing, it's I'm like... It's always pushing instead yeah, of... Yeah, I was like, you got to interact with the people you look up to. You got to interact with the people who look up to you. You got to interact with people who, you know you want to hang out with like that's how we met oh yeah and um well we met how did we oh wait oh the how so, did we meet no, was right, it the merch dude i think i just came to your house in an uber in an uber right i gave you the address <laughs> and was like take an uber to this address well at, yeah no i had known of you just through the grapevine and because you do internet stuff i love the internet but i had never interacted with you until was it merch dude I, well, I think I got upset because he was like, here's my good friend, Adam. He's a great photographer, the best in the world. <laughs> so I got on there. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I thought we were, I thought we were, I yeah. thought we were friends. You like sent him a video of you like ripping one of his shirts. You're <laughs> yeah. like, this is what it's I come to, it. man. I burned it. I have, yeah. uh, by the way, the merch dude, it's the merch dude on Twitter. Follow the guy. He's funny as hell. And nobody knows who he is. He's secretive. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I met I, him and he wore a mask. He did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I slept with him. He didn't wear a mask. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I slept with him and I made him wear a mask. You did? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, he, he's a great guy, but the, the, I found him through Twitter. Not okay. found him. I interacted with him through... What I just started to do was interact. Yeah. Right? Just be part of the, the yeah. game. The just back and enjoy forth. it. He would say something and I would comment back. And then he realized that I was somebody that's been on the road before yeah and once he realized that you've been on the other side because you know once you tour you can totally interact differently yeah because you you know there's a velvet rope syndrome Mm -hmm. you can pick the people out just visually when they're standing backstage and they don't belong yeah or they've never been there before (laughs) they just you can see just this just right. like looking like, like I don't belong or in high heels or or in high heels or hey well hopefully the 14 year olds aren't in high heels yeah Except if you go to a Kesha show. Yeah. Have you been to a Kesha show? No, I think our, we had a driver in Texas who told us where Kesha is right now. And I think she's recovering. <laughs> it's not even from drugs. No. It's not. I know. <laughs> I read about it. So sad. It, well, at least it's not drugs. Well, at least. Good job, Kesha. No <laughs> drugs. Good job. No drugs. It's it's a not a laughing. It's not a laughing matter. Yeah. We're not laughing. It's good. She's getting help for whatever it is she has. Next, she'll get help for Kesha. <laughs> she molested my hair. Yeah, <laughs> backstage once. Nice. It was it was kind of cool. She was like, basically, we're sitting there backstage. I was talking to her drummer, who I didn't know who the hell he was. Yeah, I, I didn't know. I'm like, so who? What do you do? And he's like, oh, and I'm sorry. That, I guess that kind of sucks sometimes if somebody doesn't recognize you. And he's like, I'm I'm the drummer. And I figured we were just bullshitting about mm-hmm. stuff. And then she came over and she's like, hey, she's like, I love your hair. I'm like, you want to touch it? She's like. Yes. So she got behind me and she was all like, nice. Keshing my hair. That's awesome. Do you like when people touch your hair? I don't mind. It, look, I, it depends. Drunk, drunk ass people can't just come up to me and yeah. just touch me, especially girls. Yeah. Like, I had one guy I was walking oh, to the. your hair. It looks well, so crazy. But they start, when they ask permission, it's good. Yes. But when the guys come by and are like, oh, oh I'm going to rest my, he- my, my cup on your head, I'm like, no, you're not. That's demeaning. Right. I'm like, it's one thing to joke. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to have fun. Yeah. It's another thing to try to make me the butt of the joke. Yeah. Right? Especially if you're not my friend. If you're my friend, you can do just about anything no. because we're friends, but not not a random person. I had, I had one guy, one girl just touched my hair randomly at a, at a baseball game, and a guy's like, oh, you could just reach and touch his hair. What if he touches your, your breasts? Yeah. That's and a good point. It was a great point. I was and- like... I was like, uh, 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 and I like just yesterday I was walking through the show and I wear in ear earplugs. So, oh yeah, which ones do you have? Uh, Sensophonics. They're what? not in ears, but they're they don't have their own monitors. Oh, or all anything, right, but they're Custom molded. Mold. They're molded. Nice. So they actually help me hear better. Oh yeah. So I can hear everything people say around me, and I've gotten to a mode where I can just zone out because I need to shoot. 
but I heard somebody say, there he goes, there he goes. Oh, you missed his cha- your chance to touch his head. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, I always tell people it's fine if you want to touch my head, but ask because oh, yeah. if you do it in the wrong direction, it hurts. If I just had a fresh shave, I'll tell you how to do it. But it's kind of like I had a dude come up to me at the Australian airport and he has since apologized and he felt very bad, but he just grabbed me by the head. He was taller than me and kissed me on the head and I put me in a really bad mood actually. But I was like, man, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of like a pregnant lady's belly. You always uh, ask, you know, you don't just go up and fucking, you know, smack yeah. the baby. Smack the baby. Yeah. No, so, you don't do but that. That's my rant. So I can, I can feel for you on that one. Yeah. But, but you also have to understand, I, I've learned that if you're going to have hair like this, you're going to stand out and you're going to draw attention. And if you yeah. can't handle that, then you shouldn't have it. Yeah. Like if you, if you take it too serious. You don't serious, deserve yeah, that style. You can't, you can't handle the hair. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've got the Twitter following going. Yeah. You've got the Instagram following going. Yeah. What other methods are you? Uh, I use Tumblr. You use Tumblr a lot. I use Tumblr is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, it's the most viral networking site I think there is with the exception of maybe Facebook with shares. Yeah. But uh, Facebook's also hard and very money based sometimes 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 it can be it's it's i it's a sticky it's a slippery slope that's kind of been growing and changing a lot on people it's changing and it and it i mean i don't i don't even want to talk about how it changed for me recently because i don't want to jinx anything knock on wood somewhere (laughs) but no it's it's one of those it's one of those things facebook has changed it it's just interesting how it's hard i can have a big youtube following and a big Facebook following. Mm-hmm. And then my Twitter is small. Mm. Er, not small, but it's relative to what you have. And then Instagram isn't nearly... I've got maybe 19,000 or 20,000. And it's just probably because I don't interact as much with other people or don't have a lot of people promoting my stuff yeah. out. Which I don't even know that... Well, you'll probably get a lot of following from that through the bands. It's just, in yeah. general, I've noticed that when I did something for uh, Billboard... And Billboard then repost one of your photos and they give you credit. I don't see a lot of viral bump coming from that. Meaning no. I don't, you, people don't just click on names to follow the, them rarely. Yeah. It's, so it, it's, it's interesting. And I also think that, a, you know, with Twitter, it's hard because a lot of that following isn't the key is like active following. And the cool thing about the people that I get to work with is that they are so active on the Internet. And for a while when I was starting photography, I was like, man, I really want sort of like I, what I assume is your following is photographers, you know, mainly men, maybe people interested in photography because that's what you advertise. And that is what I wanted when I was growing up. I was like, man, I want other photographers to respect me. That's cool. And instead of kind of like working towards something, I kind of reassessed and I was like, well, where am I at? Who follows me? And I was like, let's go with that. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's have fun with that. And I really like that, you know, my following is mainly girls and yeah, 14 to 22, 24, young people, very impressionable. It's fun. It's like, keeps you interesting. And uh, I can really do whatever I want and learn from them. And I learn a lot from them every day. And uh, I have fun with it. So you, you have groupies, eh? <laughs> I, honestly, I get that question. And when I'm working, man, I am working. You can't. Oh, I understand Yeah, that. like people like, I don't know. But I'm in the zone. like that. Groupies in the sense that there's people that show up to see you. Oh, those are fans. <laughs> fans, groupies that try to get on the try to get backstage yeah. to see you. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you. So talk about touring life. Yeah. I mean, I've done it, so mm-hmm. I know what it's like. Which bunk is yours on a bus? Uh, well, right now, usually it depends. With the day, remember we have two buses, so I run on the band bus because I need to document them at night too, and I. I just take whatever one's left over. I don't care. I sleep anywhere. Yeah. I saw so. you were, there was a picture of you on the hardwood because you, your privileges to sit on the <laughs> sofa were revoked. I was just, it was like the end of the night and I was exhausted. I was just laying on the floor and one of the dudes took my camera and took a picture of me. So that's fun that they interact. Yeah. I mean, they, they, and, and, and how do you build the rapport to allow you to get the trust to shoot everything and only put out what needs to be put out? Yeah. Slowly and carefully. There's no, There's no fast track to that and to have it be genuine. A lot of like behind the scenes photos of bigger bands is all not real. Like you're literally having like, let's go like a, like at one show, like I'll be shooting and then a publication will come in and shoot for the day. And they're saying, Hey, we're shooting backstage photos today. So they come, they meet with the bands they need and they go around and they pose backstage photos. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, that's cool. I get it. You're trying to get your content, but it sort of sucks because it's not real. It's when, not, and, and 
I don't know. Well, at that more. point, you're like, why can't you just give me the gig? Why yeah. don't you ask me for the photos? Buy them for me. Because when I was out with Perry Farrell back in the day, they wanted to send uh, like Spin Magazine to do this photo of them in the back of the bus. Yeah. It was something about in the back of the bus. And I'm like, I'll do it. Why, why do they need to send a photographer? And, and I totally see that mindset. And at first I had that. But in the past few years, gone out the window because I prefer just working with the artist because we choose what's published. We choose what gets out. We're kind of our own press. And then when these magazines come in, they can do whatever they want. Yeah. I don't prefer to deal with them all the time. It's I like just the one-on-one relationship with the artist. And I, in the past, I've actually gotten kind of bummed out because the magazines will ruin my relationship with the artist. Because when I'm shooting them for publication, I'm not working for the artist anymore. I'm working for the magazine. So I'm not supposed to or allowed to show them the photos. I just turn everything in the magazine and they make the they make the calls. I'll say I would I exactly couldn't do that hate because that. when you yeah, I know what it's like. You it's like you us versus them. It's the enemy mentality, right? You're not the enemy. You've made friends with the bands because you've gained their respect yeah. and you work directly with them, which is better because the magazines suck today anyway. Yeah. They don't have the reach. You have a bigger reach and a bigger following than some of these other magazines. Yeah. So it's and you also have a bigger following than a lot of bands, mm-hmm. which is a very interesting <laughs> uh, thing as well. Um, but no, but the respect thing is where it's at. Yeah. You get in with the band, you can shoot whatever you want, and they know that you're and, not going to put something bad out. And the thing is, is that I feel, and I had a band person tell me this on the last tour, I feel that I'm like a pretty good intention person. I love business, but it takes a backseat to me really having like a passion for photography. Sorry. And uh, What was that? Did you get a I shock? Had a, I just scratched my nose, and then I realized my mouth would be away from the microphone, so I was apologizing. <laughs> Now I'm going to keep talking. <laughs> anyway, but uh, what was I saying? Respect. Uh, something happened oh, with the band. Good. I feel like I'm a good, a good person, and I think that goes really long ways because the artists will recommend me to their friends, and that's really how I gain gigs rather than trying to get it through a publication or trying to get it through a festival. It's directly through the person I'm photographing saying, that's okay. So, and I like that. Well, I mean, you, you've traveled the world now. Yeah. With bands. Yeah. Which is a dream that a lot of people have. Yeah. It's not as glamorous as most people think. <laughs> it, you Do you think it's glamorous? Uh, No. I think that it starts really hard and it gets harder. The black hole syndrome. And then it gets easier because your band you're working with gets bigger. And then it gets harder because... They got bigger. They got bigger. <laughs> but it's I'm definitely treated a lot better now. Um, You know... We, like when we went to Australia recently, own hotel, you know, own. So you get your own room now. Own, yeah. When, when we're out of the country in the states, you know, the band I'm with, honestly, is very money smart and money conscious, and I like that they're so down to earth, and not in a way where it's grueling or takes a toll on you, just in a way where it's realistic and they're not very rock star about their lifestyle, and it's fun because we like we'll go out and play frisbee, we'll go out and chill, yeah, and you know we don't have to go ice fishing in the Arctic or something or, you know, shark dive. We could, but we have fun just doing the simple shit too. And I like that. No, that, that's, that's what it's all about. And when you, when you feel like you're a part of the band and they treat you well and Mm -hmm. you don't have to, cause when you, when you're just starting out and you're not with the band, you're like the forgotten one. Yeah. Forget about it. Not like they're going to forget you in the bathroom. Like, Oh, I'm only the most important part. I'm the lead singer. Oh, I got stories for you. Go ahead. Go stories. I got left at Walmart once. How'd you get (laughs) left at Walmart? I was at Walmart longer than everybody else. <laughs> and I texted him. I was like, be out in five. And it's a really big thing to kind of hold your own weight on tour. You have to do that. Call time. And I did hold my own weight, but they just forgot about me. <laughs> and did the bus drive away? Yeah, they came back like 10 minutes later and picked me up. That's a very almost famous yeah. thing right there. Yeah. And then and like first tour I went on, like, like you're saying, like it was a band that asked me to go out for a full U.S. tour. We we're in a van 30 days. And I cried like probably like seven different times on that tour because of how rough it is. It's my, it like, sorry to sound like, I mean, I was 17 or oh, 18 yeah. and you just get treated like shit, even by the band you're with, but not intentionally. That's just the road. You know, well, like, there's always you a, ba- up- a member that's tough to get along with. And yeah. then you've got the other one that you're really close with. It, it's, it's kind of cool. It's what are you doing, Steven? Checking stuff. Checking stuff. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? What time is it? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how long we've been talking. This you is going He just gave me the 30 minute sign. <clears throat> Ooh, yeah, we have more time. We have more time. Ooh, you, I'm excited. You have more stories as long as you talk into the mic. Are we doing good? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> How's this sound, Steven? Sounds good. 
<laughs> he's not looking. He is. He's looking at the levels. Uh. Yeah, we have a Zoom H6 over there. I got my own setup over here. Yeah. Man. Okay, I trust you guys. I feel like you know what you're doing. We try. As long as Steven, is this camera? Have you reset this one? Yeah. I didn't even see him walk by. It's like really cool. Fro just rents out this person's place and they let him shoot his videos in it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I rent. Mark, how you doing over there? <laughs> Mark. <laughs> it's John. Okay. <laughs> it's Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy Crackhorn. So what other what other interesting stories do you have from the road? Oh, God. See, the, the thing I have with stories is I try to tell my stories because I don't want to tell the band stories. A, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah. And B, they're their stories to tell. Yeah. My favorite thing it shows were groupies of the bands, but not the groupies. Because you know that every groupie that shows up, because the groupie's there to try to sleep with the artist. Okay. The groupie brings <laughs> a friend who doesn't know the band. Yeah, like the person driving. The, the friend who's just there for support. And so while they're in the back of the bus doing what they're doing, yeah. I'm sitting up front talking to this person, having an awesome conversation yeah. because they don't give a shit. They're like, eh, she's, she's crazy. She just wanted to meet this guy and I don't, I don't even know driving. the band's music. Yeah, I don't even know where, what's going on. And you meet cool people around the country that way or the world, which is, which is fun because I've never slept with a girl on tour mm -hmm. just because it's a, what am I going to do? You're sleep getting yourself you? in a bad situation. Yeah, it, it could lead bad. And that's just something that I'm not, comfortable with putting myself into bad situations plus i don't want to just sleep with somebody and then roll out the next well literally in an hour yeah it's it, it's it's distracting i guess is the best way to put it and i'd rather just do my job and and, and that's they're a, not the best they're not the best type of people you want to get involved with right and another thing about that doing your job is your job is almost 24 hours a day as a photographer yeah so when people think that we sit there doing lines of coke off of strippers asses it's not the well for me it's not the case i don't like strippers i don't like strippers either yeah i don't go to strip joints me neither it's a waste of money they make me feel so uncomfortable well one time Seriously. I, was, <laughs> I was at a friend's uh it was a birthday party and there were like 30 guys and they ended up going to a strip joint so i was there because i was in the car with them and and what happened is, you know, I got a tap on the shoulder from this girl and she's like, hey, would you like a lap dance? I'm like, well, she's like, it's $20. I'm like, $20 for, do you just sit on my lap? I'm like, I got the internet. Yeah. I mean, if I, I got the internet, I already pay for that. I'm, I sit on my I'm own like, lap. I'm like, no, thank you. But I'm not, I'm not into the stripper thing. Yeah. But um, on the road, I, I would drink rarely because I don't drink that much to begin with. Up a little bit, up a little bit. There you go. Well, yeah. I wanted to sit down. Oh, so so sit down and then pull it down. That's what she said. <laughs> the stripper? Yeah. You ever take photos that you haven't shown? Yeah. Um, I you guess the worst them? photo I've ever taken it wasn't the worst. But if it got out, like the band's manager made me delete it right then. <laughs> and did you? Yeah, I had to. What well, uh, theoretically was it? I'm not going to say. Okay. I've been in that situation before, but band, nobody's ever asked me to delete something. Uh, well, nor it would, would it I. would be a career ruiner for and you or them. Them, yeah. For me, it would probably make some kind of something. Yeah, but see, that's the respect. <laughs> and I don't want thing. that. Yeah, that's the respect thing that many people. That's why we don't like Edgar. You know, we got this guy Edgar. He's a paparazzi. His name's not really Edgar, or sorry, her name isn't Edgar. Yeah. Um, but no, it's that thing where. Actually, one time somebody asked to remove a photo and it was Bon Jovi personally asking, mm -hmm. which was crazy because at the time he was uh, in Philadelphia promoting uh, the Philadelphia Soul, which he bought into an arena football league. And we were down there taking photos and it was a family photo. Mm -hmm. And up until that point, he's never had his kids in photos anywhere. They just weren't. So after the photo was taken, he personally came up to the group of photo photographers and said, hey, guys, here's the thing. I've never... My family, I don't want them in the public. That's just how it is. Would you mind not putting that out there and deleting it? Yeah. Did everybody do it? Um, I made it seem like I deleted it. I kept it, but I wouldn't put it out yeah, there. Yeah, you would never do that. Because he asked. Yeah. If somebody asks you, you can't go back and fuck them over. Yeah. You just can't. You lose all your credibility. So if you ever put out something, any photographer, if you ever put out anything that is harmful to a band, nobody's going to let you back in. Yeah, and... And like, and like you're saying, like when I started doing, because basically my job is photos one day, turn around next morning, turn around that night. Mm. So every day we're putting out photos. You're shooting raw, right? Yeah. You better be. I'll shoot raw. All right, just checking. <laughs> and uh, basically when I started doing it, the band I was working with is very, con like they know what's going out of themselves. They want it to all be good. Every day they would look through every photo and okay, everything, tell me what I did wrong, tell me what I can do better. So now it's gotten to a point where I know what the band's like and what they don't like. But every time 
we put out photos, we always make sure it's the band in the best light. We have personal photos from too, like them with their parents, you know, them partying, like things they want for themselves to remember. Yeah. But we also have photos that are for their Instagrams. For hey, their that's a new band name for these people. Things to remember. Because <laughs> there's some of those bands. A day. What what band? Can't make fun of my favorite band. My a best day friends. to remember. Yeah. Well, I want taking back a day to remember. Taking back a day. To, those they're making up Tumblr names right now. That's what you're doing. Is that what I'm? Is that a yeah. game? Yeah. They this like combined multiple band names and then put their name at the end. Oh. So it'd be like taking back Tuesday. Kathy. Yeah. Taking back. Well. <laughs> taking back. Oh whatever. Or like a day to remember has like a day to Charlie. Does that make sense? No. Okay. Who's Charlie? The person whose Tumblr it is. Oh, really? A day to Charlie? Yeah, get it? I get it. All right, I it's get clever. It. it is clever. <laughs> but there's a lot of those. There's a lot of those bands. So, what's next for you? <laughs> what's your What's your ultimate goal, or what are goals? Um, my main goal is to meet you. Hi. Hey. Can I kiss your head? Yes. Later. Okay. <laughs> no, really. What What are you? Uh... Uh, my main goal is right now to continue touring with the David Remember and touring with any other bands who I've been working with and continue to work with or grow. And then from the business side of things, I'm starting to do more photo shoots again because I kind of stopped for two years and just trying to relearn, get better at that and do a lot more portrait shoots, work with solo artists. And actually I've taken a really big liking to YouTube, which is kind of the thing right now. So I kind of feel guilty but I reassessed it, and it's something I really want to do personally, so I'm going to do it. Don't, YouTube's terrible. No, well... You can't make a following there. But I... Shut, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I just like creating content. And I like you, that YouTube is a constant source for video content, but I've kind of been learning over the past two years. It's kind of been a thing that I'm trying to make videos for YouTube, and I've just been kind of teaching myself how to talk. This is hard for me. This is a learned thing for the past few years. So how to be in front of a camera is like kind of a achievement for me so i'm just trying to learn how to get better at that sure and, and, uh, and it just comes with time yeah and stalking you all right well hey there's like 1500 videos for you to check out but the, th the thing with youtube is i've seen it as the one constant for the last five six years yeah and i mean i've been on it for almost four years doing my my stuff nice and it's it's a constant it's google so the search results yeah. are going to be strong yeah and that and that helps tremendously whereas and they've also always had advertising. Yeah. So people are used, are used to, to advertising, it. which I don't know. I am going to almost guarantee that in the next 12 to 18 months, YouTube's going to totally shift their advertising models. Uh, you probably still will be able to skip videos, but I think they have to change it up totally because people aren't watching the ads. Yeah. Because they're not. So they have to adapt with the time to see what is going to work best for advertising. Because I know I know that I make money off of the ads there, but I allow people to skip the ads because I do not want to force people to sit there and watch I a 30-second ad. If, yeah, you know, like I leave videos sometimes if there's a forced commercial unless you actually follow and know that person like correct people with huge ass followings that have built it can get away with it more often because people know that they're in they're going to get quality work but if you start to monetize like don't monetize your stuff maybe i mean yes do the skippable ads for you if you're going to do it which allows people to skip right past it or they'll support you by watching the whole thing or clicking on it or something like that but if people don't know you they're not going to sit through your ads because why would I sit through somebody else's ad if I don't if I don't know the quality of work that I'm going to get? That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, and you don't make much money until you have a big following anyway, so there's not really a point to. I mean, it depends. Money's well, interesting on YouTube, but you have some insight on that. No, you do. I do. I will, we'll talk off the air about. Sorry, that. I'm not trying to teach Jared his mastercraft. We'll we'll discuss it. There's okay. a lot to be learned from both of us. Yeah. And you know what I like about you and that what I don't like about some people is that my whole thing has been like really trying to meet people, interact with people and learn from them. And I like that you've been, am I doing all right? Oh yeah. No, that okay. was for me actually. Okay, cool. Like I'm like, myself. I'm like constantly like, am I doing okay? And, uh, I like that you're really open to teaching and open to learning and there was no ego brought into the there's there's definitely a confidence but there's no ego you're probably the first person ever to freaking point that out thank you you're welcome but, but there's but, a little bit of ego in there there is but it's healthy it's it's confidence and you know and some people take that in a bad way but i take that in you know you know what you're doing and uh even when i talked to you on the phone the first time you know that's what came across so when i meet people on the road in the photo pit and i'm sure you've gotten this as well entering the photo pit is 
to me it's a little bit nerve wracking, but it, to other people it's only nerve wracking because everybody I see looks like they're ready to kill me. Really? Yeah. Why? Because they're well, they're all in the zone, but they're also like I feel like a lot of live music photographers are very competitive. Yeah, but you know what shuts them up real quick when they see you standing on stage taking <laughs> photos. But. But I don't, and I don't even do first three songs on stage usually in anywhere visible because I'm not looking to wreck their shots. Right. Oh, and that's I understand nice they have to do their thing. And I'm not going to be the photographer in their way. Um, I will be on stage for when the band comes out, but most of the time I'll shoot first three with them. Yeah. Um, and then continue to shoot because I, well, it's easier when there's nobody else in there. Absolutely. But um, I just want to be friends with everybody. So I've, I've like tried my best to meet everybody. But even when I go up and introduce myself, I still feel like people are very defensive. Well, the, the cool thing about the pit, though, is, yeah, they'll be defensive until you break the until you break the wall. Yeah. Until you're the one who actually comes up and, and introduces yourself. And then it gets rid of all of the animosity right there yeah. because they see that you're human. So, oh, I almost sang Christina Perry, but I won't do it. I know the song. You, you're only human? Sing it. Because I'm only human. Oh, yeah, I know the song. I bleed the same. I don't know the words. Yeah. Christina. Anyway, uh, anyway, but yeah, that's what happens in the pit. Okay. Um, so anything you want to leave us with before we wrap it up? No? Shrug your shoulders for the people listening out. I'm in having the... fun. Well, that's good. But We you... have to stop? Yeah, because you have to get over to the radio station. Steven and then you have yeah. to get over to the radio station to do the other job. Can we do this again? Next time you're around. Okay. When are you around again? I don't know, but I'm really, I'm really into everything you're doing. Not to sound like a suck up. Hey, this is cool. Good job, man. Thank you. That's, I don't know. I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. I'm very impressed. We're going to leave it at that. Okay. So, Adam, thank you very much for being here. Thanks, man. Thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. And we'll be right back. So, there you have it. That was the interview with Adam L. Macias. Really interesting stuff to hear about how he's do- doing it. And he's, what, only 24? 24, yeah. 24 years old, traveling, well, he's traveled the world as a photographer, mm-hmm. has a business that he runs. Um, it's just smart. Yeah. It's just smart stuff. It just shows that... And he has no fro. No, he's complete and opposite. And he's built a huge following. So hair versus no hair. It doesn't matter. The <laughs> hair, fro versus no fro. It doesn't. It doesn't you, matter. You don't need a fro. To you succeed. don't need a fro to be successful yeah. online. He's a very personable person. We very. saw him at the show, interacting with people. People know who he is. Uh, when he's walking down the street. He's, he's just as much a member of the band as the members of the band. He's got a bigger following. <laughs> and a bigger following, Than yeah. the band. It's crazy. Which is very interesting. So that stuff's pretty cool. Check out, what do we need to check out? Uh, yeah, my photos, where I took the photos of him, that's over on the website. We're posting that at fronosphoto.com slash raw talk hyphen 82. So we've got that going. All right, now it's time to move into something else. Uh, Last week, Sutter talked about finally getting his Squarespace set up, and I told him that I would take care of the payment aspect of it. So he's been set up now with a year for free. What happened when you went and tried to set up your Squarespace, your trial version? I just had a... I ran into a couple issues. I guess my computer skills clash a little bit with the site, um, I'm not comfortable enough to fully code my entire site, but I don't want to just run their template as basic as they give it to me. So I was trying to change some things around. Which template I, did you choose? I ended up I running. I used Wells. The one That's that what I used. I used. Um, <laughs> but I was just trying to change a couple things, and I wanted to add one line of text in one part of my sidebar, which would be really easy, like code injection, if I just if I could access their code. But when I went to look at their template code, it's empty. You can't look at their HTML or CCS or whatever they're running. Um, I guess because they keep it hidden so people don't use their templates. Right, so you're a little more knowledgeable when it comes to HTML and coding. You have a clue. Yes. Okay, so whereas I have no clue and I found that I didn't have any trouble because it did what I wanted to do. But yeah, keep going. So I just... I couldn't look at their code to just inject that one line, that one little line of code to do exactly what I wanted to do. So I was just trying to run around and figure out a way that I could do it. I ended up finding a workaround. Um, It's not exactly what I wanted, but I'm content with what I found. And um, I mean, that was the only issue I had was I just couldn't tweak one little thing, but I ended up doing it a different way. So it was okay. 
But as far as Squarespace in general, with their photos and galleries and how you upload, it's very easy. It looks super clean and sharp. Everything's nice. And uh, I had no complaints as far as that goes. So it was just because you couldn't go more in-depth as a coder? Yes. Which I, Without fully Yeah, I was going to say, you, you, were, you were telling me earlier that you could start from scratch, right? Yeah. I think, and then put anything you want, but he wanted to kind of start at a base template. With a template and then, and then build off of it. Yeah. I know there's other code injections that you can do, but they must limit some of it. They, they limit some stuff, but like if anyone uses like Tumblr or anything like that, when you look at your theme, you can actually go into and read every single line of the HTML of the theme that you're using, and you can go in and tweak and do whatever you want. Where when I looked at the code for Squarespace, it's blank. They don't allow you to look at their coding. So all I wanted to do was just add a line of text sure. under. So like, was it, it? It wasn't a deal breaker for you. No, not at all. But it you was found just your- uh, a little frustrating at first, and then I figured it out. How long did it take you to put together the site in general? Um, definitely longer than you because I was running in circles for a while trying to figure out what I wanted, and I'm still not fully done. The problem with me, the time, is. Uh, putting my images together, it's my finding issue. what I actually want to put out. Right, so if you have your images ready to if go If I have my images upload, ready, I had mine it up would probably it. take me I, I, maybe an hour, yeah. sure, an hour or two. What's, what's your site so people can go take a look? Um, it'll be at stephensutterphotography.com, but I'll also link it to stephensutter.com or whatever. Okay, so I have a there. bunch. Anyway, it worked. You liked it. You found your workaround. We're going to send this to them to see if they have a solution where they can make it better. Or maybe I'm missing something. Possibly. Now, isn't there like different package deals you can get too for Squarespace? Like the $8 is kind of more the starter package? Yeah, I use the $8 one. I wonder if you get one of the more advanced packages if it lets you do that. That's I, possible. I don't know. I mean, it's I'm possible just, that you have more tweakability yeah. in the larger ones. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to check. Mm-hmm. But uh, their, their customer service, did you email them? I didn't. I was going to use their live chat, but it was down because I was doing it late at night. And I just didn't want to go back and forth with emails at that well, time. Well, if you do have a, a problem in the future, they are very, very responsive as customer service yeah. 24-7. So they're very good with that. It's great. All right. So I'm going to go take a look. I think we need to make a video once you're ready with your uh, Squarespace that you and I sit there and discuss it, discuss your images and just do a critique of your site. Sure. So if you're interested in checking out Squarespace and getting a free 14-day free... Uh, <laughs> getting a, for, a free 14-day free trial. Can't say that. If you'd like to get a free 14-day trial, go to squarespace.com slash fro. Try it out for yourself. Uh, and if you decide that you like it, use code fro at checkout, and you'll save 10% off whatever you decide to purchase, whether it's a month or a year. 10% is a lot it, when it comes down to a full year. When it, it comes does, down to yeah. a full year, yeah. I mean, it came down to like, eight. it's $84 a year. And like I've said numerous times to people that have countered and said, well, WordPress is free. WordPress is free. And the not original WordPress the template is pretty crappy looking. Yeah. Uh, you're going to spend 30 to $40 for a template, which is not a big deal. If you have a clue about what you're doing, by all means, go with the... the uh, WordPress. The WordPress and have your all the plugins that you want to get and then find a hosting service. You're going to spend 5 to $10 for hosting a month. That's already included with the other things. So yeah. whatever. I don't need to sell it. Just check it out for yourself. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Mm-hmm. To each their own. Gear of the week. We've got a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach down here. Do you want me to walk around? No, I no. I don't reach around me either. <laughs> I've got uh, right here the DJ. I got a second DJI Phantom that we didn't talk about a couple weeks ago. That the DJ the DJ DJ the DJI Phantom came in this time without the built-in camera, uh, and it came with the Z- Zenmuse H3 dash 3D gimbal system. What a great name! Yeah, great name. <laughs> so that allows you to attach the How's it smell? <laughs> old and moldy? No, it doesn't smell old and moldy. It just smells like a uh, a Foot Locker again. Oh, this oh one God. smells like Foot Locker. Smell it that does one. It smells like Foot Locker. No, smell that one. It's even more Foot Locker. This oh literally God. smells like I walked in a Foot Locker store. That's Foot Locker smell. This is, they should make a cologne out of it. They should. And they should call it Foot, foot Locker. locker. <laughs> that's smell. crazy I like, know. I, I, I didn't know what you were talking about at first but when I just smelled it I'm like that is Foot Locker so it's got these marshmallow type things here this is the stabilizer but that's uh, not marshmallow. even marshmallow <laughs> very very technical term that's kind of like the 
uh, DJI Phantom 2 regular it, stabilizer, right? It's what's right? currently there. Yeah, yeah, which I'm not a huge fan Well, it fan doesn't of. stabilize anything. It doesn't really dampen. It doesn't really damp do anything. So now I got to figure out how to get this oot of the box without breaking. Yeah. Oh. This oot? Oot? Okay. A boat? All right. So they've... Well, I don't want to break the thing. Come here, gimbal. Come hither. Oh, snap. Look at that. Crack the GoPro one. plugs oh. into there. Oh, that's cool. Holy... I, I'm going to have to go read. Is that a three-axis gimbal? It's a three-axis gimbal. Whoa, there's so many things that I don't know what to do. So one of the reasons that you go with the Phantom Plus 2, which is the new one, that has a built-in three-way axis gimbal with the Go, uh, without the GoPro, but it has their own camera, is it's all attached. It's all put together. Yeah. You don't have to then get a wireless setup for this that wirelessly transmits back to a, a screen down below. That's already built into the other one. We're going to have to figure this out. I'm gonna so there's no controls or anything with that, right? It just, it just stands freely, and you have to control the, the actual I, DJI I, Phantom, right? To, to show where... No, I, this is supposed to rotate and tilt and do all of those things. No, I, it does, but not electronically, right? Yeah, like, no, I think it does. Oh, really? Look, there's, there's all these different... Imp I'm going to have to find a scientist. Is there a scientist who, so got, offered, a scientist. who, got, offered a, who got offered a scholarship to go to Rhode Island Institute or something and didn't take it Rhode for Island. scientists? <laughs> Steven, your job, you're going to take home the DJI Phantom and get this set up. Cool. He's going to come back with like a giant, extra awesome <laughs> yeah. helicopter. Is that all right with you? Do you yeah, want to do that? Yeah, that's fun. I'm not d demanding that you do I would, I would be enthralled <laughs> to okay. do that for it's you. Gonna be like, well, instead of uh, attaching the GoPro, I actually attached I the 5D I put this robotic <laughs> arm that actually just <laughs> cradles your DSLR. I made a whole new uh, helicopter. All right. <laughs> so, I just I took the, the bits and pieces and <laughs> Frankensteined it. Uh, can you go back in the other room and grab the think tank bag for me? The oh, denim one. The retrospective right 4T. Oh, it is here. All right. Can you... <laughs> this, but this is a bag. This is your old, old, This old is my original. Bag. You've never seen I have this. one of those. I've seen it once. Wow. Really? So this is a bag... Never seen you use it. ...that I got. It was a gift. Back in the day, I would go to Mid-City Camera, and it ha it's now GameStop. Nice. I used to hang out. It's next to the Hong Kong Gourmet, because I used to get soup there all the time. And... I would, Alan at Hong Kong Gourmet too, they like me. They like they, they were nice to me. But I showed up one day and Matt, I ended up shooting his wedding also, handed me this bag. He's like, it's a gift. So I thought they were giving me a bag. My mom actually went in there and was paying off a bag. It's like a $230 bag back in the day. It's a Tamrac, I believe it's a 612 uh, is what they called it. And it's a fantastic bag. For back in the day. I was going to say, it's like your standard bag, which that was, was the standard back in the day. My grandfather had that same bag. Yeah. I had one similar to that. And so I couldn't find it here. And when I was at my house today, it was up in my room. So that was cool. And it actually has um, a, a tag on it <laughs> that my mom wrote. Oh, It, that's it has my name, my address, my phone number. So I've left that's that That's a there. keepsake right there. Yeah. So I brought this here and I'm going to put it up you on the shelf. You should put it on your new bag. No, I'm going to keep it on here. Yeah. This is the bag. I liked it in blue. Memories. Yeah. No, it's good. Oh, and there's more writing inside. J Poland, it says inside also. So there's multiple. It's like I, I kept all of my bags. I still have my first one. I have my film bag when I was doing film, and I just keep it just for memories. I don't know. I, I keep Sorry, all that. you grab these for I me, I keep please. all that yeah. stuff all the time. Yeah. I just gave away, what, 10 bags? Yeah, to Antonelli. To Antonelli. I had to, uh, when Sutter came... you get new uh, bags sorry, like every week. When, <laughs> when Sam Green came over... Well, speaking of new bags, hand me the uh, Gura Gear bag. Here's just the bag. So Gura Gear is another company that reached out and they wanted to send me stuff. So when they ask to send stuff, I, I usually tell them no, and then they send it anyway. <laughs> but I know that Gura Gear is one of the more expensive bags out on the market. This is like a backpack that's pretty much empty, but then they give you... No, I don't want that one. Then they then they have like inserts. inserts, so you can kind of put inserts in there. Which I, these aren't made as well as I. They're not as they don't feel as good as the think tanks feel. I mean, the, it's just the material. The wall is decent, like the side it's of it. It's sturdy. It is sturdy. It's it's well put together. Um, you don't like the the actual inserts inside, right? Like this. Yeah, I think it's too small inside. But anyway, this is a bag. It's part of a modular system that you can. Use the backpack and put different style things in it. Could both of these fit in this bag? I don't bag? think both can fit in at the same I was time. I say, that's... Yeah, but that's a lot of... It's, I mean, it's, it's a lot of space, but it's not my choice for a bag. But this is Gura Gear. If you want to take a look, check them out. They have... This bag opens up on the top and the bottom. Interesting. No, I don't want that one. 
All right, so let's remove this, and I've got one more thing. So how much would you say this stuff costs? I think it's 300 bucks For everything? I think these, no, I think this is like 200 and some. Wow. I think the big thing's like $159. For yeah, that. for that. Wow. So I wouldn't. it's expensive stuff. Can you remove that for me? Yeah. Gura Gear is expensive. Thank you, sir. It's made well, but expensive. It is made well. Hand me the last bag. I know it's a lot of stuff. This one I, I think is pretty cool. Thank you, Sutter. Yep. This is a Think Tank retrospective 40. You have the 20, which you took from the shelf. Which is almost the same size and um, what it's I can narrower tell from here. Yeah. It's narrower and, and taller. Exactly. I have, I've been using the Retro 30. The Retro 30 is what replaced that bag that my mom bought. And I'm going to Israel and I asked for the Urban the Skies 40 to be sent and they sent a Retro 40. So now they're resending me the other one because I, I need a backpack for Israel. Okay. That's what I want to take. Um, I don't want a shoulder bag because we're hiking a lot. So I want it on my back. Mm -hmm. But they sent this 40 and I'm I don't know if I'm tired of using the 30. It's just that when it sits on the ground, it like flops over and like the 70 to 200 flops over, can fall out of the bag. This, the 70 to 200 would totally fit standing up. I just hope that it, it, it's a little wider than my retro 30 that I have now because I'm having trouble putting lenses in without using two hands. Yeah. And, I, and that's what I loved about the old bag that my mom bought me is quick. I would stand it up and then the lenses would just stand up in it. And then I could just grab real quick and not have to do anything. So this bag is in slate blue. It matches Mr. Denim over there, Stephen <laughs> Sutter, who came in with a denim jacket today. It literally matches exactly his jacket. Now, this seems a lot more sturdier than your 30, but um, I don't know if that's just because your 30 is so worn. I think that my 30 is broken in, that's and it I gets mean. bigger the more you use it. Yeah. And it does get worn in a little bit. But mm. I love the materials that they use. This one actually fits a laptop. I guess I would consider doing that. Ooh, they got nice padding on the uh, strap. Oh, yeah. It's a great strap. I mean, it's a great bag. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm going to start using mine, my, my 20 that you got me for, uh, for shows. Like, if, I'm, if I just know I'm going to need, like, the, the Holy Trinity or something, I'll just pop all them in real quick, bring it instead of bringing the entire bag. Oh, well, you, use, you carry one of those uh, the low pro I, backpack Low pro things. 320 AW, I think, is what I have. And but it, that's not good for shooting a it's show. It's just huge. It barely fits under, like... Data remember, for example, I had to make sure that I put my backpack under the uh, riser or whatever, the, the foot, the little step, the step, thing. yeah, yeah, in the barricade, because I knew there was going to be crowd servers. And what the security guards do is they stand up on that step, bring them down, and the crowd surfers usually just jump down and they land on whatever's on the ground. Yeah. So you got to make sure you no, hide do and this. protect your gear. Oh, at does all it times. need to be reset? So. Oh, well, then do, yeah, reset all them and then let's get to Wheel of Fro. Um, so, yeah, those are the bags. Uh, the reason I asked for the Urban Disguise 40 backpack is I have the Urban Disguise 35 version 2, and I can get the 20, uh, the, the 24 to 70 in there with the on the D4S with a 14 to 24 and 70 to 200 and a laptop and an iPad and other stuff on the outside in one wow. of the 20,000 pouches. It's a tight fit. You can also shoot out of that bag because it stands up, but it's a tighter fit. And I saw that they did the Urban Disguise 40, which is a little bigger, not too much bigger, which is what I'm looking for. So maybe that will give me a little bit more breathing room because the other lenses, they all start to touch inside. And I don't, I don't really want that to happen. Yeah. And I'm not sure I'm taking the 70 to 200 to Israel. Yeah. I think that the 14 to 24, 24 to 70, and maybe that's it. Maybe what I take. Because I, I well, you'll be safer with those lenses versus the seventy to two hundred for sure. Ah, uh, but uh, the, but I, I personally love the quality of my seventy. I do too. If I had to pick one lens, but I'm not there to shoot portraits, you know. But, and yeah, I'm not there to. But shoot I know it. you're gonna get there and be like, oh, I wish I had my seventy to two hundred for that shot. I can just see myself being we'll see somewhere. How, yeah, we'll see how the bag looks. All right, the wheel of fro is getting set up on the table, 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 table. <laughs> All right, so we've got the Wheel of Fro, and I'm not going to tell you who is spinning yet, but it has a Lexar card thingy ma bobber, so you can get Lexar. We've got Adorama picks. Uh, that password's probably, that code's probably done by now when this is coming out. It will be. Uh, and two Fro guides, question mark, which it almost landed on last week. Rode microphones. Thank you, Rode microphones. Think tank bags, we just talked about. More Adorama picks. Borrow lenses is $250 in credit. Squarespace, squarespace.com slash Fro. Uh, a flash guide, a black rapid, which I still have yet to make the new printout for. 
Uh, Fro guide, blah, 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 road, blah, 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 blur lenses. That code, by the way, for Adorama Picks will still be good for about three days when oh, this after? comes out. Yeah. So the code, they're giving 25% off aluminized prints when you use code PXJARED25, the number 25. Yeah, that'll be good till this Wednesday, the 30th. And it's till the end of April. End of April, yeah. So all day that day. So spinning the wheel this week is Jesus Chueca. Jesus Chueca. No, it's Jesus, C-H-U-E-C-A. So he's going to spin. Are we ready? Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm, lo- I'm looking at Sutter because I'm waiting for Wheel of Fro. How's it look in the window? Does it look good, though? Yeah, it looks fine. If you didn't say it. I was going to spin it. Are you ready? ready? Are you ready? ready? <laughs> Wheel of Fro! Round, round, round it goes. We're all some nobody knows. <laughs> there it goes. That's my saying. Don't take it. It's flipping, it's flopping, it's winning, it's going around in circles, and it's going to stop on a think tank bag. Woo, think so, tank! Con- oh, God, God. Congratulations, Jesus, on winning a think tank bag that it landed on currently right now. Therefore, you are a winner. <laughs> chicken, chicken dinner. So... That is going to kind of end it. We don't do flying solos on interview days because then it would be a three-hour show. And it's a long interview. It's uh, what? It was a close to 40-minute interview. Yeah, I would not, say about oh, that. Oh, right. So it's about a 40-minute interview. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so yeah, that's good. Anything? What are you doing this week, Sutter? Uh, this week, I'm building a vanity. He's building our DJI DJ well, I'm doing phantom. that too. I got some really big logs and a chainsaw. And I'm gonna. <laughs> You're gonna make a helicopter out of that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Go ahead. Explain this. So Leanne threw out her vanity because her basement flooded. All right, Leanne is my Sutter's girlfriend. Girlfriend who's four foot eight. Eleven, but <laughs> she's four foot. I hope she's older than eleven. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, yes. Uh, Confused you? Like, no. <laughs> She's actually 10. <laughs> and uh, her basement flooded and her vanity got like moldy. So she threw it out and um, building another one out of logs. <laughs> You're <cedar>. so manly. <laughs> He's going to chop down a bunch of wood with his beard. I and- yeah, I have what like do you a- chop with? What, what, what kind of axe does a hipster use? I, is this, do, do you have a... Steel. S-T-H-L. I don't know. I, that's the only... Husqvarna. Wait, what did you just say? Steel S T what? S T H L. Are you talking about like the, the tool brand? Yeah, they're a tool brand. Oh, I was like, um, I don't know what you're talking about. Steel's not spelled that way. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> All right, so you're building a vanity. What are you doing? Uh, what am I doing this week? I have no idea. We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting ready to go to Israel. I yeah. leave on... Uh, I'll probably the... be editing a lot to get... So we have a bunch of stuff back. I, I mean, we already have a bunch of stuff, which is good. We do, but it, we'll have even more in the can. Yeah, some uh, books, photo books. We did a review as well, which I don't think we did. Be putting well, out. I can say we did a Nikon okay. D thirty three hundred, not a review, a preview, uh, a, a guide, a guide to show people that just picked it up or are thinking very about picking up in depth, in very in depth about all the buttons, all the menus. We use the Atomos to then show the back of the screen, which is awesome. The old way I used to do it, I would set up the HDMI connected to the TV and then photograph. That's not, that's not what you meant, I'm sure. We would connect it to the TV, and then I would video the the TV playing it back. That's how I used to do it. But now we can use the HDMI out of the camera right into the Atomos yeah. and record all the movements. Yeah. Everything was great. It so It doesn't have to be just in live view or recording video or anything. You can record anything output from the D3300 on which, the Atomos. Which was awesome. Mm-hmm. So that tells you that you can use an Atomos with a D3300. Yeah. And it, it's a very in-depth thing for anybody that has it. It's a great guide and it's free. It's like 45 minutes too. 45 minutes of free. A free. A free. Which is good. So I'm preparing for Israel. That's on, I leave on the 4th. May the 4th be with you. May the 4th. And uh, we start on like the 6th. But a heads up for you people out there. And when I mean you people, you people. I mean Who are you, you, you people? I mean you people in Israel. Uh, somewhere around the, maybe, I think it's the 10th or the 11th, there's Google YouTube offices where I'm going to go and hopefully speak. Oh, nice. So they're going to allow me to invite audience to come in and ask questions and have refreshments and stuff. Can you fly me out to Israel for that? Mm -mm. No? Can't do it. (laughs) Can't fly you out. But so there will be that. And that's a great opportunity for me to meet all the people that are Fro readers and others in Israel. That's awesome. So that'll be cool. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up. This is on, uh, go to fronosphoto.com slash 
rawtalk-83 for all of the news stories and more that we talked about for the full interview with, uh, what's his name? Adam uh, L. Mackayas. No, Rowan. Oh, Rowan. Rowan Anderson. Anderson? Yeah. His uh, interview was up there. And the Adam L. Mackayas photo shoot that I did, all those edit- photo edits are going to be up there as well so that you can check out the video and see exactly what I did. Awesome. And that is going to be it for Raw Talk episode number 83. Jared Poland Frono's photo.com. See ya. <laughs>